Hello everyone, it's me again, it's uh, the film TV review. I've just looked uh, with my uh, fellow guest, but he just disappears as usual. It's wonderful, isn't it? I know, there he is, there he is. <coughs> anyway, good morning. We've got a lot to get through today, and I'm going to bring him on right away. And there he is, the one and only, Lee Carlson. Hi, Lee. Hi, everyone. So, what have you been up to? I don't want to talk about football. So, what have you been up to since then? Uh, watching quite a lot of telly and stuff. Okay. I've been watching less films and more telly because I got a bit bored. I picked a few goodish films or like the way in the mood for them. So, I abandoned it and went to telly. But it's about telly as well as films, isn't it? Yeah, it's about telly, but it's not ordinary telly, is it? It's like TV series, things like that. Yeah, stuff you can books. follow. Stuff you can follow, yeah. 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 Or even uh, decent documentaries, to be honest. I, I watch, I've always watched loads of documentaries. It's in my DNA. Documentaries I always have done about all sorts of different things. I'm interested in loads of stuff. So, yeah, docs are always a good thing. Just excuse me one sec. <laughs> you can't make these things up. Anyway, uh, I watched a smashing film, and it was called Triangle. And it's only a few years old, but at least it's a very, very good story. It's about your... The beginning of it, you see this uh, young woman, she's in a cab, yellow cab, in America, obviously. And uh, I, 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 I assume it's, uh, I assume it's around Bermuda way. Hence the title, Triangle. So anyway, you see, you see her get out the cab, walk down to the, some little wharf. And there's a fella there to greet her and he says, are you ready for this? And she says, yeah. And they go sailing. And there um, how many? There's one, two, three, four, five, six people aboard, including the girl, that is. And they go sailing. And they hit a storm. Came right out of the blue, a storm. And the ship capsizes, the Aldi yacht capsizes. And that's where the story begins. It's a fantastic story, a very unusual story as well. A it's very triangle. Yes, it's a very unusual story. Did you watch it? Uh, not yet, no. Okay. Well, anyway, that was that. That's what I watched. And uh, there's a there's a few others I watch, and you can. I don't think you'll be able to get it on. Unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to get it on YouTube or anything like that. Triangle, but you will be able. If you've got a fire stick, I'm sure you'll be able to get it somewhere along the line, and it's well worth a watch. It's a well worth a watch, and it starred Melissa Gilbert. Is it Melissa Gilbert? I always get mixed up with all these Melissa girls. Melissa. Oh, she was in um, Little House on the Prairie, Gilbert, wasn't she? Oh, what's her name? Melissa George. Melissa George in Triangle. And it's the same Melissa George that was in another very, very, very good film, which was 30 Days of Night. Did you ever watch that? Yeah, I don't love and that film. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant film. Great actor. Josh Hartnett. He was in it. I like Ben Foster at the beginning, the one who lets the vampires in. I was going to his, mention him. His, his teeth are don't, in it. Don't, 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 don't say too much. Uh, uh, Lee, Lee, please. Don't say too much about it. You said it. You've said too much about it already. Here's how I was a bear reviewed it. 
You see, it's shit. Yeah, no, no hang on, play. Play, give me a break, will you? Please. Right. You just fucking go. Do you know what, Lee? Honestly, God, you, you just go on. You just go on, mate. Mm. I'll tell you now what a review is, shall I? You mm. see a ship in the background and it's it's in Alaska, ice covered, freezing. So it's in the tundra. And you see a fella just walking up a ship, not up a ship, away from a ship. And he's in the heavy snow and he gets to the top of a ridge where he looks down at a small town. He looks down at a small town. And then you see two cops that's patrolling and people going away to get out of the to get out of the place for the winter or for whatever reason. You just see them going. And there's other people that's left there. And that fella then comes into town. And he that's where that's he where And that's where the story begins. That's where the story begins. That's how you review something, Lee. That's how you review it, mate. You, you, you don't say anything else. All right. No, I told you before, and you do it though all the time. You give the story away, that's it. I don't think I give too much away. Like, I mean, some no, things you, you look at the, you look at the, um, at what it is, your first glance, and you know what type of film it is, and then you watch no, it. No, you don't. It. No, you don't. When you see the poster, you don't see any of that. You don't see what it is. To be honest, someone had told me before I seen it what type of film it was. Oh, yeah, okay. So I already there knew. You. There you go. So you go on that person thing. You tell up. I remember you saying once as well that uh, you went through the bloody story once on one thing. Anyway, good morning, Frank and Lee. So he's John. Morning, Frank. Hope you're well today, mate. And Lee says so Daz Reynolds. Hey, it does. I never got those pictures through, mate. I didn't get them through, unfortunately. And there's a Chris Dix. Off the record, Frank, please answer the email from MS. No. Why should I? She insulted my panel. She hasn't a fucking clue what football's all about, what the show's all about. She's saying that we're negative. And with the owners, uh, lovers and everything. How far wrong she is. So I've got none. I've got no, I've got no intention. Just stay, just stay away. Just stay away from the uh, the podcast, that's all. Just stay away. You don't like your soul. You don't like the panel. You don't like the other chat. So just it's stay away. It's uh, all you, it's me. Because I love FFG, FSG so much. It, every time I open my mouth, it comes out how much I love FSG and rate them all that money that they've spent 30 pence a year or something. Was the, the, yeah, yeah but they take that FSG wrong. They take, that, they take that the wrong way. And Zaz says, I asked Jamie to send them to you, Frank. Yeah, I don't know, mate. Yeah, I don't know. You did. You certainly did. But anyway, there's a, there's a, there's one I want to watch, which I might watch tonight actually, and it's called Civil War. It's a new one, and it's seen a plan. The advert, Sorry, I've seen the adverts. I've, I've seen the advertising and one with like advert where the pictures moved and someone said something. Uh, I couldn't figure out what it's about, to be honest, seeing some men with guns or something. Well, can I... I well, well if you would have let me explain, you might have had some idea. 
on a simple Jesus Lee. Anyway, you just see what's happening today throughout the world. But this is set in the very near future in America. You've heard of Julian Assange? Mm -hmm. Well, where is he? Uh, the castle in the clouds, in fairyland, the land of... He's, he's, been, he's been nabbed, Danny, and locked up. I'm like, wait, I'm not even sure where he is, mate. I know, just know he's Well, all right, I'll tell you where he is, so you don't know about him. He's in uh, Belmarsh, Belmarsh Prison. That one sounds crummy. Right, he's in Belmarsh Prison. Have you any idea why? To try and gather Ronnie Cray stories. I'm talking to my fucking clown. I'm sorry. I've forgotten what they actually locked him up for. What what was the one? Do you see in my corner? Do you see in my corner here? Do you see it? Pointing to me. See it over there. I can't go on to it. Do you see in my corner? What does it say? Frame. Julian and it's no laughing matter actually. What was he? Had... I've forgotten what the story was where they went off the reds and like then locked him up because they were going off the reds at him for ages and he knew he was in a bit of danger, didn't he? So um I've forgotten the back it was a while ago. He's been locked up for ages, so I've forgot. Yeah. Well he's been uh He exposed the CIA, mm -hmm. all their covert operations, the murders and everything else. And there was a fella, he was foreign secretary, secretary of state at one time under Trump, Mike Pompeo, and he admitted he wanted them assassinated because he exposed the CIA. Yet the Guardian newspaper exposed them. Nothing's done to them because they follow the uh, the Western narrative. So they couldn't do anything to them. So he's a scapegoat. And he's in jail. And the Yanks want to uh, extradite him and give him 175 years in jail, where he'll die, obviously. He's an Australian citizen the americans a few years ago tried to pin a rape on him in sweden yeah i hate that yeah well them girls came out and said no you were approached by the cia or some some americans see what i mean about them horrible people oh i see as soon as you sorry go ahead as soon as, you're, as soon as you're inconvenienced them in a major way or a way major enough for them to act, you're um, in trouble, mate, and that's all there is to it. Yes. And there's been more at Sanchez, at one that you've never even heard of, mate. Yes. And that's the problem. Well, this new film called uh, Civil War is very similar. Not about Julian Assange or anything. Well, it, it's very similar of what's going on in the world today about covert operations and being exposed and whatever. You see? Freedom of speech versus control. and Well, the freedom of speech, the freedom of speech is gone. You know that. You can get, in, you, you, you can be accused of being um a racist you can be accused of uh, being um, a homophobic an islamophobic yeah every everything anti fat what isn't the new one for anti black and fat people which you should never do by the way yeah 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 there's one now isn't there for that yeah there's everything everything every conceivable thing and do you think that's right or wrong? Wrong? 
It's rubbish, you know. Of course it is. Well, it, it, maybe I shouldn't say it. Go on, you carry on. I was going to say stuff, but no. Uh, no. The Liverpool 12th man. Uh, about to get some sleep, but hope you are about well, my rest. In this chat with our panelist, Frank and Lee. I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Mate. Uh, sorry, uh, 12th. I knew what you meant, mate. Well, have a good sleep. I'll, um, if I were you, I'd sleep till tomorrow. After, be, just before the kick-off, you might be all right. You might be all right. Anyway, uh, anything else that you... What, what, uh, if you're gonna say soap operas or anything like that or anything that you're you're being watching you know normal telly as you said you got fed up watching films i did yeah i did so what did you watch more of them dan Aykroyd things and there's another one um the proof is out there don't know the bloke he presents it but uh it's a good one more of the same just like uh, mad stories about, about uaps it's just strangeness in general could be disappeared people uh could be elves it could be aliens could be uh unexplained phenomena in the sky yeah there's a lot covers a load of stuff it's quite good getting into it well did you know what happened to uh to Aykroyd, by the way do you say he had a um, spaceship in cattle <laughs> Yeah, he, did. Oh, boy, that way. he did, he did. But also, what he encountered as well was met the men in black, mm. and they followed him. Mm. He said that they were going to do the men. They said he was going to do the men. I like that accurate. Yeah, yeah. Do the Ghostbusters. Did you ever see uh, the Great Outdoors? With John Candy. No, I haven't seen that. Brilliant. So funny. So, so funny. Is it a camping yeah. film then, is it? They're all out camping in motorhomes or something? Yeah. Yeah. Log cabins. Right. And John Candy and uh, Dan Aykroyd's are brothers. And they bring the wives, you know, John Candy's got kids. And, and they bring, but Dan Aykroyd is a, um, he's a well-to-do person, you know, way up in uh, mm. in his profession and in, in his company as well, like a company director. <laughs> and John Candy's just an ordinary fella, you know, mm. just an ordinary worker. I'm sure Annette Benning's in it. it who plays John, um, Dan Aykroyd's wife, I think it's her. Someone of a, a their stature, by the way, of their status. And that Benning, so fun. And the 12th man said, the team could use some sleep too. <laughs> Up their heads. Oh, every day, all day. And uh, John Conway says, I saw that film, it was so funny. It was, John. It was. I've never heard of it. That's a new one to me. I mean, I guessed what it was about from the title, but um, I've never heard of it. See, you just you just say about it, you know, like their brothers, they, they go to a camp where there's log cabins and each family takes uh, a log cabin, obviously. And I want to say, it's so funny. Brilliant, great little storyline as well, you know. But just what the log cabins, but it's dead dear, and it's like only for posh people, and it can afford that shit. I'm gonna say the word you don't like it, but there you go. Only posh people can afford that shit. Where you go to cabins in the bloody islands or something, because it's about a million quid to stay there for a week or something. <laughs> All right. Well, the twelfth man says. Speaking of the unexplained phenomen phenomena. Phenomenons, I'm sorry. William Shatner hosts a show called Unexplained. Mm. They have uh, an episode on how the government took out JFK 
brain and kept moving his head around for some unexplained reasons. I know that Shatner does these things, uh, William Shatner. He's 90 now or 91 or something like that. He's an incredible age. He is, I mean. William Shatner. William Shatner. Well, that, that, that is, uh, I think he was only some part of the brain that was blown away, wasn't there, really? Was that JFK's? That's the Americans for you. Do anything. I'm talking about the deep state. If you do anything wrong, they do you then. They did Malcolm X. Uh, they did uh, Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy. Anything go against them, they kill you. That's America for you. And uh, Gary Rigby. Um, Mona Franklin Lee, have you been on? I don't know what that is. FJTV sounds good. So, can I just oh. ask something? They have every film you've ever heard of. Them. No, I haven't, Gary. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Lee. Of course. How would you get that FJTV? Have you got to buy it? Like, have you? I I haven't a clue. Well, you, I'm not I very good with tech. Maybe Gary, maybe Gary. And the match is not on. I can't do that. Well, maybe Gary will tell you. Maybe you come on and you know put a comment in. Sounds and good. Sandra Kirkpatrick. What a nice name there, Sandra. Sandra Kirkpatrick. How are you there, Sandra? Mona Frank, talking about John Candy, tra yes, trains, planes and automobiles is one film I watch over so fully, yes, yes, trains, planes and automobiles, I'm very poignant, I'm very poignant by the way, very poignant, oh yeah, there's your answer there mate. Thanks, Sandra. I, I, I was trying to think. Um, I was trying to think of uh, another film with Candy and yes, Uncle Buck. Sandra, Thanks. Uncle Buck, get on to that. Planes, trains. Sorry. Seen planes, trains, and automobiles. Seen that one load, but um, I don't think I've seen many of his others, to be honest. Uncle Buck, and you've never seen Uncle Buck? Very funny. Uncle Buck. <laughs> I've heard of it, yeah. I remember it. I remember the name and the people laughed about it. I just never saw it, never got around to seeing it. Just missed it. Yeah, Gary says, just Google it. It's free. Yeah, I'll write that down. Yeah, write it down. Write it down. I'll put us up now. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm fed up with all this. Sorted, yeah. Have you got it written down? Yeah, yeah. I'm down, oh, yeah. Okay. All one way. It's all lower uh, And there's uh, Daryl Merry. Hiya, Daryl. Hope you're okay. Speak to you this afternoon. Okay. I hope my daughter comes down uh, 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 to take me shopping. Said she would. But you know, there's always a caveat that I fancy, and she says, I'll take you shopping. Dad. But I need some shopping, yeah. Yes, uh, you know, John Candy, great actor, unfortunately, he's well passed on. 
and uh, trains planes. And, uh, Steve Martin's brilliance in it, along with uh, John Candy in the film, trains, planes, and automobiles. It's just about situations that you get in, isn't it? Situations. But anyway, that's that's the. I was watching. Uh, I tell you what, I watched. I watched an old forties um, film. Old forties film called Rebecca. With um. Mrs. Danvers, that one. Yes. <laughs> I love that. With uh, Olivier. Daphne Du Maurier's uh, story. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. That Mrs. Danvers. She, they got the right person to play that part. Didn't he? Mrs. Mm. Danvers. I don't know the lady's name. Don't know her name, but frightening woman here. And uh, Gary Rigby says, uh, I've been watching one film a night on there. There are some of my favourite 60s. Morgan, a suitable case for treatment, and the knack. And I'll say, uh, yeah. 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 I'm watching More than lads, says uh, Ian McKay. Remember the man with the two brains? That, yes. So funny, that one. I think Kathleen Taylor is in it as well. Yes. Yes, she is. Do you know what? I've seen a picture. Not a, not a film. A picture of Clint Eastwood yesterday. I'll tell you what. Unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Oh, but yes, he's 93, I think. But he's just so unrecognizable. It's incredible. You know, he's like stooped. Just horrible. I haven't seen any footage of him for years now, like about any updated footage of him for about at least five or six years was probably the last time I've seen a current picture of him. Do you know what I mean? And that's a long time, isn't it? Like five or six years. Yeah. Well, I see him now. Like, unrecognisable. There's a few unrecognisable. I think one of the uh, the most unrecognisable and she's only in her fifties. Is uh, I hope you know this one is Bridget Fonda. Bridget Fonda. Mm -hmm. She's so unrecognisable today. What just from age, like? Now Jason was a being, you know, producing this one, this particular thing. Because he got he has to bring his kids up to the stage. I don't know what he does. He does so well, to be honest. He was a put he was a put the picture up of Jane Fonda then and now. And she's in one of my favourite films actually, and it was another like comedy drama, and it was called Lake Placid. Mm. With Oliver Platt and Bill Pullman. Mm. Crack and film, crack and film, mm. sarcastic, everything's in it, sarcasm, and Brendan Gleeson, he steals the show, him and Oliver Platt steal the show, but she's fantastic in it, Bridget Fonda, Fonda. but if you yeah, see I used her, to, yeah, I used to love it, I used to massively fancy her like years ago. But gonna see her now, you don't think it's fancy. And Gary Rigby says Irene Ando is a legend. Yeah, love Irene Ando. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> 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 
I watched, uh, I, I forget the name of the film, forget it. I've mentioned this before. And, you know, one of our stalwarts, uh, which was Sylvia Sims, she's been in, you know, some fantastic films. She plays a nun, you know, under German occupation in Italy somewhere. She played um, a nurse in, uh, what was it called? John Mills. Oh, again now. Doctor at home or something like that. No. Ice Cold and Alex. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Ice yeah. Cold Alex. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. So you can imagine the that the films that she, you know, that you see, they're all these dramatic things. Great actress was Sylvia Sim. And anyway, she's it was just a black and white, and Sidney James was in it. You know, a few other stalwarts, you know. When you say Sidney James, you know what <laughs> you know, like uh, the cast is going to be like uh, Dick Emery was in it as well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he was in it. And honestly, he's got this big harpoon, you know what harpoon? Like, he's got this up uh, and they run a fire is over to this tree. And she says, uh, She's a dizzy blonde in it. Mm-hmm. It's girlfriend, Sydney James's girlfriend. And um, she said, Hey, what's that? And he said, It's an harpoon to catch whales. I said, Oh, and she looks at the end of it, you know, the big thing. Mm-hmm. The meow sort of thing, and she said, <laughs> "You know, to catch whales." She said, "Where's you put the whale?" <laughs> far, not far. Where's you put the whale? Wow, that's one of the greatest. Any, thank you. One of the greatest lines in any film. Like, what was you going to say? Do you want to hear what films I tried to watch for today, but I couldn't get through one I've seen before about 10 times anyway, so I thought I'll watch it again. But because I've seen it a lot, I haven't seen it in years, but I thought I'll watch it again. And I watched the first bit, the first bit of this one. And the other one I tried to watch, I said, I've never seen it, but I've heard of it, and I've heard of the character. It's called Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage. On it's like a skeleton on a bike or something. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it. Couldn't get he into it. He's uh, he's see, he's like a sort of a uh, I don't know. It's sort of. He's just a bonder, the devil, Somerset, yeah. He gets killed, doesn't he? He's dead. Yeah. He gets killed, you know. He's a motorbike rider, but he gets killed. So he comes back as a, uh, an avengeful, I don't know, what you call them, ghosts or something. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. The cage. I'll tell you what I've started to watch last night, but I was too tired to uh, complete it. Uh, and Nick Cage, it was Nick Cage and Ron Perlman. And it was Season of the Witch. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Good one. Oh, medieval one. times. You know, the Crusades. Mm. Crusades. Look good. Has anyone seen an Amateur Horror film, says Gary, called Straight On Till Morning? Yeah, I have. I and probably have. Yeah. Yeah, it rings a bell. It rings a bell. Bonkers. Bonkers. Jackie Brown. Yeah, Jackie Brown. Yeah, Jackie Brown. If you want to watch a film, and you can get it on YouTube, this. And it's a crack of film. It's a crack on film. And um, Robert De Niro and Edward Norton. I think Edward Norton is a great actor. 
but he's a bit of a bad boy over there in um, LA. But anyway, nevertheless, Edward Norton, great actor, and it's called The Heist. It's very, very good. You want to watch it? It's really good. It's goodly. And you get us on YouTube. It's on YouTube, believe it or not. YouTube have got some fantastic films. There's a film called, I watched it years ago, and it's a true story. A true story. And it's called The One That Got Away. Ever heard of it? No. It's uh, R.G. Kruger. Have you heard of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. German actor. And it's about a German prisoner of war. And that's why it's called The One That Got Away. True story. And it's on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, just have a look at it. It's really good. Ozzy Kruger, very good German actor. <coughs> and uh, Gary says, I love Mike Lee films as well. Watch Grown Ups 1980. It's brilliant. Phil Davis is one of my He's a brilliant actor, Phil Davis. I totally agree with you there, Gary. There are two, you know, there's another film named Phil Daniels, but Phil Davis is absolutely brilliant. Isn't he? Lee? Mm, brilliant. I love Mike Lee. Me and DW were talking about Mike Lee in your one of your history show chat boxes the other week. We couldn't stop talking films and we got rar onto Mike Lee. Very brilliant, Mike Lee. We were buzzing off nuts in May. I love nuts in May. You know, the TV play by Mike Lee yeah. with Alison Stedman yeah. and Roger Sloman. Yeah. She's good, mm -hmm. Alison Stedman, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My mum put me onto that nuts in May when I was still a kid and I just watched it and shrieked with laughter. It was so funny. I didn't understand. I wasn't into Mike Lee then because I was a kid. I was about 14, 15. But my mum said, watch this, son, it's dead funny. And that was the, the introduction to Mike Lee. And then when I grew up and become an adult a few years later, thought, oh, I remember that name, Michael Lee. He made that funny thing, the camp, and, and uh, I went after his films and was not disappointed because his films are bloody brilliant. Well, Gary Rigby says, I also recommend The Hot Rock with Robert Redford. Yes. Yes, crack and fill. The Hot Rock. But there's a, another film called Sneakers with Robert Redford, Sidney Poitier, Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd's in it as well. Kraken film. Sneakers. Really good. Oh. Captain Sal, what a lads, true romance with Christian Slater and Rosanna Arquette, yes. Captain Sal, yes. Absolutely. And State 20, ever watch State of Grace with Gary Oldman, Sean Penn? Yes. Gary Oldman is a cracker act. Cracking actor. One of the best, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's a great actor. And uh, Sean Penn, I used to like him. Uh, I always thought he was a great actor until uh, he tried to get into all this political bollocks with uh, Zelensky him and Ben Stiller. Uh, Morning to you both. Hope you're well, says Lee Brady. Morning, Lee. And he says, Free Julie, <laughs> is that a film? Or I remember reading Free, Free George Jackson. I think that was a Brooks Act stuff. <laughs> that 
Oh, so great. That must be the comment of the, the week, the month. Now, yeah. that's funny. That's really funny. But I'm trying to remember what George Jackson had done in Brookie. I forgot I what he did. Didn't he measure his wife or something, put her under the patio? <laughs> was that him? No, no, that weren't him. George Jackson was someone else, mate, right, from earlier in Brookie. I think he was like a... A prison officer or a fireman or something in a in Brookie George Jackson, and he was married to Marie, who was like a harridan with a big mouth, a typical scout like working class woman with a big mouth. You'd go, I am, I'm not you. All over the streets, he was married to a woman like that, and I think he went to jail on purpose, like to get away from her, to get away from the woman. Yeah. Yeah. It's I um, yeah George Jackson, mm. but I think that is so funny. Peter <laughs> that sounds just that a film. <laughs> oh, that's a cracker. Or, uh, I remember reading <laughs> George Jackson. I think it was a book sign star. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cracker, Lee. No, Julian Assange is a uh, political prisoner. And, uh, that was, but that, that Lee is the funniest thing I've ever. I know he's laughing his head off as well. That's so funny, that. So funny. Mate, that's going to bore me now. I can't remember <laughs> the, the flesh and uh, bones of the jo George Jackson story. I can see the actor fella who was him, I can see his face, and I'm looking concerned. And I can remember that he had a wife, I'm sure he had a wife with a big mouth, a really big scout's mouth, his wife. I'm sure she was called no, Marie. I never really watched it, to be honest. Oh, I, know. I was a kid, I was a kid when Brookside come out, and I was a kid when I was really into it. I didn't really watch it when I became an adult, but I liked it when I was a kid, because it was in Liverpool. And it, and it was before EastEnders. Brookside came out before EastEnders, mate. It, there was only Coronation Street, and then we had Brookside, and there was Emmerdale. We had nothing from the south, which is good, because I don't want to see them a lot anyway. They bore me. Only messing southerners, if you're watching. Um, yeah. But it, it, ours was the second soap. The second soap, really, like. Yeah, but the, the, the show in a nice part of Liverpool. It was like... Um, it was like the cup series and all it was shown was all the nice areas i was talking to ricky monzie he said they took a drop because they were showing all the nice areas of liverpool they they, they just want to show slums you know what you know buildings that are being demolished and say oh yeah there's slums yeah, yeah. and uh you know he, he said that's why and the storylines were great. I forget what it was called. I forget what John McCardle was in it. There was a lot of uh, the great uh, Liverpool actors in it. Mark Womack, he was in yeah. it. Well. Yeah, he's a good actor. Ask Gary, uh, well, I'll ask him, uh, the guy, Vincent Price, does he drink in, the, in Matthew Street in the grapes sometimes? And he's got a mate, Beetle Dave. Because remember, we were talking in the chat box, Gary, and I was saying I've been in the grapes in Matthew Street and met Beetle Dave, and he was with a guy, and I think it was that Vincent Price who'd been in Brookie. But I didn't know his name was Vincent Price when I was speaking to him. Right. I think he's using a connotation, isn't it? What's the connotation there? I know the guy who played Jason Shadwick in Brookie. His real name is Vincent Price. When you mention Vincent Price, do you think of that actor? I think of Vincent you know Price. I mean? actors, don't you? Yeah. Uh, and he laughs and says, that was all before my time, but wasn't there people protesting and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Lee George Jackson. It was a big thing in the Echo in that years ago when I was a kid. 
<laughs> and everyone watched, but not everyone, but obviously women watched it like in Liverpool, Brookie, and, and children watched soap operas. I grew up watching soap operas because my mum watched them and there was only one telly in the house years ago. Not like that, where you've got phones, left screens left, right and centre. There was one screen in every house. It was in the living room. Another night, your parents were in charge of it. And George Wilson says, as well as it, no, it's also George Wilson, Ian McKay says, uh, George Wilson as well, top lad and, and Red, who was in Brookie and played Ziggy in Grey Jail. See? Mm. Ziggy, man. And I Gary says, uh, yeah, he does, Lee. I know them all. That's what uh, Gary says. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'll recognise him, Gary. I can still see his face in my mind. Uh, there's uh, been some price like so. Because I was having a couple of pints with him in there, talking and laughing. So I'm trying to make them laugh anyway. But Beetle Dave made me laugh. He was funny, him, um, a character. Beetle Dave. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, this taxi fella. He owned a taxi. You know, that take people around. And he said to me, he, he got to know that I actually seen the Beatles live. Seen the Beatles live up at the, uh, up at the, um, not the Grafton, uh, the Locarno, you know, it's called the Locarno down. Forget what it's called, the, the, the Olympia, I think it's called today. And anyway, he said, can I have a word with you? Phone me up. I said, yes, yeah, sure. How did you get me number? Oh, uh, got us off Merseyside. Okay. Anyway, I went down and seen him. And he said to me, would you like to uh, work um, for me? And I went, what? what? I said, I'm working. I said, I'm a lecturer. He said, no. He said, you know, weekends. And I said, what to? Him? He said, bringing the people around uh, and telling them about the Beatles. I said, uh, listen, I said, I love the Beatles. No one liked the Beatles. Nobody liked them. Greatest band ever, forevermore. And we could go 500 years in the future and they'll still be talked about. <coughs> I said, so anyway, he said, um, but I want you, you know, just, just sit in the cab with about four or five people. And tell them about the Beatles driving around to different venues. And, and I said, no. I said, there are people, say like an, an American or a Japanese or a German, who knows more about the Beatles than anybody. They know what colour socks they wore on a Thursday morning when they got up. I said, these people know everything. I don't. I said, I know a couple of venues that they played at. I said, uh, Blair Hall in Walton Road. I said, they you know, they played there. And that's it. That's about it. Obviously, you know, the, the most famous places is the cabin on uh, the Iron Door. I said, but that's about it, and a floor and pavilion. I said, but that's about it. That's all that I know. So I refused. I could, could have made a lot of money, you know, but I can't do things that I don't know about. I really don't. Do you understand what I'm saying, Lee? Mm. You wouldn't feel comfortable, like... Yeah, 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 you know, someone could ask you the question, and they already know the answer or, you know, part of the answer. And if you can't answer them, please the turn. Please the turn, no. Anyway, uh, morning, Frank. Morning, Lee. Sorry, I've not been on lately as I've been visiting family. Watch the podcast back, though. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, mate. We've got a uh, post-match tomorrow, tomorrow night. 
And Steve 25, Brookie was funny. Remember the Dixons as a chicken in the garden named Keith? I liked the Dixons. I liked that Ron had that mobile, the Moby with like, you know, like Moby Dick painted on the side or a, a, a thing of Moby Dick. And used to go like drive it around because like, they used to, remember the mobiles that used to come on council estates, especially rough council estates. There's one in Bootle Marsh Lane. It was always a rough estate, and I used to spend a lot of time there when I was a young man. I him. It was a mobile, like, but it used to make me laugh. Just the whole thing. It had like, yeah, it looked like a tank or something because that the state's quite rough. And I used to like be my mates in the eye eyes just and look down at it and laugh and that and just think about. Uh, my mother, has, my mother has a mobile. She had a mobile. Kiev. I, th I think Jimmy McGovern must have all put that in. And uh, the Brazy. Ah, yeah. He used to be called George Christopher. He played Ziggy and played little Jimmy Corker. That's right, yeah. Me, he still looks the same, only older, says Gary Rigby. And um, Ian McKay, yeah, it was funny, Steve. Remember that storyline when there's some cult took over the close, led by the Mank Simon, he converted Terry over to his cult classic. I, I, I'm being honest, you know, I didn't really look at Brookie. I don't like soaps. I don't like them. Because you get them... And they're supposed to represent real life. And they don't represent real life. They don't. You never get religion or anything in them. But I think Brookside was the best out of a lot of them. Because it did bring up social issues. Mm -hmm. Especially with Ricky's uh, character. But it gets a bit daft when they all marry, you know, getting to vote, marry him and all that. That's a load of bollocks, that. <clears throat> and Ian McKay, see, you know, they, they, they're just great little things for the comedy. You know, Chicken Kiev. Yeah. <laughs> chicken <laughs> Kiev. Fantastic. Paul Turner, have you seen the alien abduction film Night, Night Sky starring Jason Connery? Night Skies? No, I've seen Dark, Dark Skies. That was a TV series about Majestic, you know, another uh, offshoot of like the CIA and all those. That was a cracking series. That I'm interested me that. Yeah, guys, and I'm into like aliens, well, ever men in black stuff and covert bloody government agencies. But I watched like one or two, and then I, I couldn't be arsed with the rest of it and jibbed it. That was it, good. Yeah. Rich Dark Skies, Skies, yeah, brilliant. See, and the council, my little brother, he loves that type of stuff. Aliens, it's specifically alien invasions. He loves my little brother and his and his best mate, Alan. He's like ten years younger than me, so but so I did like it and I'd watch it with him. And he was really into that. Like I remember getting excited myself, but for some reason I only watched a couple and then I didn't go back. I don't know why I just didn't like. Well, anyway, uh, Gary Rigby about Brookie, isn't it? Casa Bevro. You know, because mm -hmm. Beverly and Ron, Ron Dixon were a Beverly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was clever. That was clever. You know, clever writing. And Lee Brady says, I know we're talking about films, Frank, but seen some pictures the other day of old cottages next to the small jail. Was it, was it that on the, uh, the Everton Crest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were known as um, those Everton cottages. And this is where it gets mixed up, you know. Rupert's Castle, you know, that little lock up Rupert's Castle. 
No, that was built uh, in uh, 1787. Rupert's Castle was built in 1787, as it's known as. Prince Rupert was here between May and June 1844. And it wasn't even built then. As I said, it was built in uh, 1787. Yeah. Why were they demolished? I read the original. So I haven't got a, a picture. I, I can't get hold of a picture of Everton. Oh, I have. I've got it somewhere, but I just can't put my hands on it at this moment in time because it's a cracking picture of Everton. And it's, um, you see the little windy road where those cottages were. In fact, Prince Rupert stays in one of the cottages. Prince Rupert, and that's where the myth stemmed from, where he stays in the uh, cottage. And then, you know, they thought that he built this. He thought that he built it. I'll have to take him off because he's talking privately. Uh, yeah, he, um, when he stays in one of the castle, uh, one of the cottages where he looked over the uh, towards the Liverpool castle, where he looked over from Everton, from Everton. So that's where his little leg quarters were, was, or where, whatever. And I, you know, the little myth said, oh, he built the uh, castle then, the lock-up. And he built tunnels and everything. Think about it. You're talking 1644, digging tunnels. Because don't forget, Liverpool is built on sandstone. Impossible. Digging tunnels down to the Mersey. No. No. Indeed. So, yeah, uh, that was the lock-up, Lee. That's the lock-up, mate. The Everton lock-up. And it was used as a, um, a lock-up for drunks and also for condemned men who were going to the gibbet in London Road. That's what it was used for. Uh, Dark Skies was okay, Frank, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, certainly was. Was Spielberg involved in it? Says Ian McHale. I really don't know. I really don't know. But it was a crack and bear series and they took it off for uh, political reasons, apparently. Because it was too near the knuckle. And it was exposing Majestic. This you know, group of, like, CIA fellas. But that's the way it is. Uh, it's based on the Phoenix uh, light, Frank. Night skies. It starts off in a camper van. I won't say anymore. Is that... Hang on a minute. I'll go back to that. At dark skies. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Night skies with Jason Connery. That's what you. That's what you mean, isn't it? Uh, I seen a, a I seen a film called. I haven't seen it, but I looked that up. What's it called again? What's it called again? Night skies. <clears throat> I'll have a look at that. I looked that up. Night skies. But dark skies is totally different. It's a TV series. And it looks at all the phenomena. 
all the unexplained, but mostly, uh, even the JFK, it's set in the 60s, by the way. <clears throat> it's set in the 60s, but it was two there, the knuckle, cracking there, cracking, cracking their series. Really good. Arthur Brookie ended up in the royal family, says Gary Rigby, yeah. Yeah. And Lee says, uh, interesting in that, Frank. Nice one for sharing, but more old buildings gone. Yes. Yeah. I know. Paul Chair, I saw the set of the War of the Worlds with the plane crash scene at Hollywood Studios. All right, okay. Yeah, that's one of my favourite little films, that, with uh, Gene Barry. Yeah, it's a cracking little film, that. Lord of the Worlds. Not the one with Tom Cruise. Um, Gary says, got to go out soon. Got to go out soon. But let me know what you think about... Yeah... Yeah, if you can get it on, yeah. I'll last lead to uh, send me, uh, text me the... Oh, yeah, there he is. Are you back? Sorry, that was just my mum. My mum called unexpectedly to uh, say... No, no, no. It, it's, uh, that's why, because uh, we could hear uh, you, you know, when you said hello, mum, so it took you off. <laughs> to one of the fry or anything. Uh, Gary says, you know, about that... Uh, Fish thing, whatever it's called. Fish. Oh, F Share TV. F Share TV. So you can text me that, can't you? But the other film that I dug back into um, was King Arthur with Clive Owen, Ray Winston, Mads Mickelson, bloody um, Ion Grufford. Um, Mate, him that Ion Gruff. And so is Mads. Mads is a great actor. Yeah. Is uh, Morgan Freeman in that? No. No, he's not, no. Not in King Arthur. But, uh, there's others in it, like. But it's a good film, isn't it? I like, I like Stellan Skarsgård, like, as the amazing Viking King. Yeah, he's good uh, as well. He's good. Uh, I've seen him, man. Uh, oh. Ronan, have you seen Ronan? Mm. Gregor, he's called in it. Yeah, excellent film, isn't it? Jean Reno, mm -hmm. De Niro, Fanta, and Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price is a great actor. Yeah. It's got a great line of a great cast, and a talent overload in that cast. No, no, mega. And the, uh, the female lead character's good, Natasha McElholm as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, she's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely. She is. You're a good girl, eh, Deirdre? Do your job. I can't do accents. That was meant to be an Irish. That was meant to be Jonathan, Jonathan Price's Irish accent. Because his Irish accent weren't that good either. Yeah. I met him at uh, Radio Mersey site, you know, I was chatting to him, great fella, very gentle, mm. chatting to him, and I, I said to him, I said, uh, you did a, 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 a TV series about William Wallace, supposed to have murdered his wife, he said yes, I said, did you think he did it, and he went no. Because he, he said, I had to delve into, you know, the actual, uh, the actual case. I said, yeah. Lovely fella. And I said to him, anyway, I said, you tried to kill uh, James Bond, didn't you? Because he was in a, 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 what do you call him? A newspaper mogul. I tried to kill Bond. And he just mm -hmm. laughed. He just laughed. I said, yeah, I said, yeah. He said, at least you watch things that are men. Because I mentioned that Ronan, you know. 
What do you think of the Halloween films, Frank? What do I think of the Halloween? Um, the first one with Donald Pleasance, the original John Carpenter's, and Deborah Hill. Uh, fantastic. Really, really good. But when they start doing, you know, sequels, that's where it loses its intense intensity. Intensity. Yeah, both teeth, yeah. intensity. That's that's just me though. Uh, but the Halloween, uh, the, the original Halloween, fantastic. I like Pleasant. I thought he was a great actor. He was like a Vincent Vincent Price type person, wasn't he? With that funny uh, voice. Two of them had uh, two very distinctive voices. Price more so than uh, than the other fella. There's something about Donald Pleasance's whole essence as a as an actor, person, as a voice. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Yeah, there's something striking about him. I don't know what it is. Uh, no. uh, Are you talking about Pleasance here? Mm, Donald Pleasance, yeah. Yeah. Indefinable about him, like that draws yes. you in. Totally, yeah, totally agree there. That's a good, uh, that's a good little uh, assessment. That he's very but watchable, then, like because of it, isn't he? He's very watchable because of it. Very watchable, very watchable. Mm. There was uh, a film, I think it's called Death Line. Death, it says, yeah, Death Line with Donald Pleasance and he's the chief inspector and you know his underling was brilliant brilliant was Norman Rossington oh yeah I don't know if actor. Mm -hmm. no I, I was I was watching an interview oh, I read an interview I'm not quite too sure now and it was a to Sean Connery you know not Sean Connery and they were talking about actors and he said the most enjoyable i've worked with this is this is sean connery he said because all as i got every day working with this uh, fine actor was laughs belly laughs and you knew who that was norman rossington did you know he made a film with a uh, with a man No. Well, he made a film. Washington, like one. Well, he made a film called The Longest Day. You never heard of that? Yes, I think. Um, what's it? Well, anyway, The Longest Day is about the Second World War and the Normandy landings. Mm, mm, that rings a bell, yeah. I think I have seen it. Well, Paul McHale says, Ian McHale says, uh, that was it. Uh, Paul, Paul, Falling Skies about an alien invasion. I think it ran about five or six seasons. It was all right. Uh, he's talking to Paul Turner. That's right. I love the talking. It was good and the special effects were great. Yeah. Uh, the first two Halloween films were okay, then it seemed to lose its way. The last few, which has been made, were better, but more gruesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, here we go. Yep, top actor Donald Pleasance. They have an order about them as actors. James Mason. Yes, James Mason. Yeah, they both had this eerie quality to them, didn't they? Vico Rizzo, he was in, um, he was with John Voight. A mid, what was it? Midnight. Midnight yeah, that's it. Well, there's my mate. There's your mate there, there, Lee. 
Oh, right, mate. Hey, is he oh, over here? Oh, are you? Oh, it's great to see you. Really. Couldn't get on the George yeah, Galway, Galway show the other night because I was doing a pod. I was doing a podcast. Football. Podcast. So I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't do it because it was a pre-match podcast uh, on Wednesday. So that started at eight. I know I should have gone on for the first hour, but I had to prepare and I had to do things, you know, so I couldn't really have it on DW. But I did watch his monologue. But DW, don't you think it's becoming more a rehash? A rehash of uh, everything that's said and done, and it's, it's just the same old, same old, and nothing gets done. Really, talking about George, you know. And uh, I was on Judge uh, Napolitano. We only seen one live show, but he only got on for the last fifteen minutes, ten minutes, and uh, the rest I just looked up, just looked up, you know later on because it was busy and uh, what about the original film the fog paul said yes the fog with jamie lee curtis yes that was yeah one of my favorites that from childhood so, so is um the thing the thing in the fog were two of my favorite horrors as a kid they actually came out you know they were released when i was like eight nine or something and that's just the right time to start getting into horrors like in it when you're eight and nine yeah if you say so <laughs> you're eating that mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah so adw if you're still there there's a film called um a new film called Civil War. And I was explaining before that it's like what's going on today about the press, freedom of speech and all that. And what the Americans like to, when you come out and say uh, truth, truthful things that the Western press don't print. So it looks good, looks really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you, Jay. Yeah, honestly, I agree with you. Yeah, he is a great speaker. I totally agree. He's got great guests on as well. And uh, Judge Knapp, see, with Judge Knapp, he has, say, like four guests on a day. And he asks the same questions all the time to them and show clips. But my point about Judge Knapp, Napolitano, is that he gets different opinions, which is good. Different opinions from different guests. But they all have the same opinion. Every one of them. I'll fill you <laughs> in on what I think when I've watched some Judge Napolit Napolit Napolitano before. And yeah, uh, cool. what's the other one? Um, the was he what was it the drone or the Jerewers or something? Uh, the the Duran. The Duran, that was it, yeah. And you began with D. The Duran. The Jerome, the Jerewers. <laughs> and you began with D and it had an R in it. That's where I was coming from. I thought the new had a D and it was an R in it. So I thought Jerome, Jerewers, ah, Duran. That's near enough. But when I've watched it anyway, like I'll let you know what I think. I'll get into me like political zone and my opinion zone and me me uh, me person re reviewing zone. And I, like obviously we won't be speaking here about like, but I'll tell you what I think of it when I when I tuned in and watched some, which yeah. we do soon. <clears throat> well, uh, Ian McHale says, uh, Ian McHale says, speaking of sequels, can anyone think of a film sequel that was as good or better than the first film? Rarely happens. 
No. 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 The only things that could be, you know, because they are films, and they're like the Superman films, because the technology and whatever, you know, advanced, so it's a lot better if you know CGI, whatever. So I think that the, the likes of those type of films. But no, uh, you know, so I mentioned, uh, and I don't think I meant, uh, I don't think I answered it. For so I think that was Lee's fault. Uh, the 12 Angry Men. What a film. What a film. Black and white. So it gives you that, you know, that atmosphere gives you the atmosphere of 12 jurors deciding the fate of a young lad, whether he was guilty or not. Henry Fonda, what an actor. What an actor. Brilliant. Brilliant. Great film. And that could never, ever be. Uh, you know, if they made a sequel, not a sequel, uh, uh, you know, did it again, you know, with today's actors. No, so. And just a sequel. No, I can't find a sequel. Or, no, I, I just can't see it. I, I'm stuck. I'm really stuck to think of anything. You know, Jaws, when you looked at Jaws, for example, oh, great film. Um, Awful. Aliens. Is that is Aliens better than Alien? Well, Alien, again, the original Alien was brilliant. Yeah, hard to beat, hard brilliant. to beat. Aliens yeah, yeah. was a but different just, film, wasn't it? Exactly. It's so, you know... It, it, they just went so to make more money, these studios, like Jaws, because Spielberg didn't want to do another Jaws. He said, no, that, 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 that's it. And, they, you know, they just wanted to uh, make more money. And it just becomes stupid. Then. The only ones I think of is Back to the Future ones. I think they were good. You know the sequel mm. back to the future because it was still in the same uh, mode if you like of being funny of being funny yeah and i like yeah. them back to the future i'm not sure if i liked them as much as some of the other similar type things that were about but i did like them and Ian McHale says, I remember the, the Galloway speech to the Senate after the Iraqi war. He told them straight, absolutely, I went down. That was unbelievable. That was unbelievable. That. He just <laughs> hit them with it because they tried to get him. Couldn't do it. He was an MP at the time as well. They would have loved to have got it. Those Americans. Loved to have got it. Yep. So I'm glad you brought that up Ian, because I like Galloway. He's um, he's one of the lads who stands up and tells the truth. He ripped Rishi Sunak to bits <laughs> the other day. Sunak. What a prat he is. What a you know, I, I know, he knows the, uh, I'm talking about Galloway here. He, he knows the, the, the truth, the proper narrative of what we're told, or what, not me. I won't watch it. I won't listen to it. But we need it. What people are getting told, absolutely ridiculous. What people think, they haven't a clue, honestly. 
You just think everything's all right with everyone else. Ali Noose, our Romanian friend. Hello, Ali. Hello, my guys. Happy weekend. Same to you. Do you know what? When you read that out from Ali Noose all the way out there in Romania, the sun shining, shining through my uh, bay window there, just like a load of sunlight came in. I think I'll go out today. After this stream, I'm going to go out and oh, yeah. move around in the sunlight. What is it? The sunshine came softly through my mm -hmm. window. window yeah. Got a trip down easy, but I changed my way. Do, do, do. Cause <laughs> I made my mind up. You're going to be mine. I tell you right now, any trick in the book now, baby, that I can find. Da -da, da -da. Donovan, yes, Donovan, Sunshine Superman, what a tune. Yeah. Sunshine, yeah, Sunshine Superman. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what reminds me of uh, years ago, before you were born, I guess. It was um, a whiter shade of pale. Have you ever heard of a whiter shade of pale? Broke a while. Only the song, but is there a film? Did you say then? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a song, pro yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Quite that. Shades of pale. Fantastic. That, that that brings me back to you know great days with me mates and girls. Yes, girls, lovely girls. <laughs> I was looking about. I, I was seeing this girl, you know, and. Um, at the time when that was on, it always reminds me of that. And the brother didn't like me. <laughs> I was walking down. I don't know where I was walking. The brother came behind and went, What are you doing with him? And she went, I like him. <laughs> I like him. She said, That's <laughs> bad. Never turns out well enough for us, though. Uh, Frank the Blackboard Jungle Star and Sydney Poitier. What a film from 1955. Brilliant. Brilliant. Paul Turner. They did follow ups to Skyline, but they weren't. No, the Skyline was well one off. It was a crackhead. And the, the, that's what I mean. You know, the. Awful. Awful. The follow ups. Terminator 2. On my way out, but listen until I got to go. Up that end, says Mickey M. Are you Mickey? Terminator. Oh, that is nice. That's nice. Isn't Mickey Good out crawling. there? Uh -huh. And uh, go call that Mickey M. Terminator 2 was brilliant. Like Frank said, the effects were groundbreaking for the early 90s. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you, one of the most, one of the most um, groundbreaking, which surprised me, which surprised me, was um, oh, Almost a werewolf in London. Mm -hmm. I got that right. A werewolf in London, where you see the fella just changing. That was the first time that yeah. CGI came in. I don't know what it used, but yeah. it was brilliant. I was, I was, I went to film. I went, to, I went to see that, and I was looking at. Remember the pub they go in, the pub in the country. In the countryside, yeah. saying don't walk over the moors. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because they knew. And um, what was the song that was played? Oh, I can't remember. Credence Clearwater Revival. That's right, yeah. Mm. Bad Moon Rising. Mm. I see a bad moon rising. Oh. Mm. Fantastic. That's another one, uh, 
another one that came out when I was a kid, that film, like, and it was a big deal. Which one? A big deal. An American way. Oh, yeah. It came out yeah. when I was a kid and it was a big deal. At first, I, did, I didn't get the name. I was like, why is he fucking American? What's, what's that got to do with anything? Why is he here? What's an American werewolf doing coming here? Don't get it. And then, like, I watched it and I liked it. Yeah. And I liked the well, hard one that I was when I was a kid. Well, our Romanian friend says, nowadays, movies are not even close like they were before. Gladiator. Lord of the Rings. Mm. Troy. We're great. Absolutely, Ali. Absolutely, fella. Absolutely. There's, there's not always good new films to watch, but not in the mainstream, not anymore. All the mainstream movies are awful and are getting even worse and worse. I agree. I, I, I agree. They are. They are. Look. I send you some song. I'm trying to have a Romanian accent now. I send you some song. But past days was a raining year. Now is sunny. Very nice. Does it sound like a Romanian? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a painful... A version of one of your Italian voices that you do when you're doing the one speaking Italian. <laughs> I'll show you who has, yeah, yeah. <laughs> has a great voice and you'll agree. Oh, you fantastic. Every time. And I just laugh. And he always plays in these, you know, films that were like, you don't want to know, not a comedy or anything. Do you know who it was? Peter Lorry. Yeah. Do you know who Peter Lorry is? Yeah. You, you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Rick. Maltese Falcon is in that. Please, Rick, please help me. Rick, Rick, please help me. Oh, they come for me, Rick. <laughs> what film was that from? Um. <laughs> Forgot. Casablanca. Oh, Rick, please help me. Help me, they are coming from. He was in a film and it was a comedy with Vincent Price, of all people. And the um, the Undertakers, right? And the film just starts, you know, like mist and whatever. And people around the green mm -hmm. right? And you see Vincent Price just standing there, you know, with his head bowed. And Peter Lorry, who's about two foot tall, he's standing there with his head bowed like that. And, the, you know, the, the people are all around the grave. And then they all turn and they walk away. And they just look at each other, you know, Price and Lorry. So they walk away. <laughs> Get the coffin. <laughs> you know, you're expecting them to lower the coffin into the. And they, just, they just tip the body in, into the grave and put the coffin back in the earth and just <laughs> ride away. Fair enough. That lost so Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Loved it. Family might not be happy, like, with the way you carry out the funeral requests, but, you know. But it was just, uh, it was so funny. I forget what it was called. Yep, it was something else. Says here, Mickey. Oh, yeah. Says here, Mickey, Mickey, um, Mikey, um, to uh, Ian McKay. And uh, Paul Turner. Nice one, Lee. Well impressed with that. That's when you sang before. That's why Mickey M got off and Ali Noose and them all. He chased them all off. Uh, and there's uh, our lovely Jade. She hasn't been on for ages. Good afternoon, Thank Frank. Late chat. Oh, Paul as well. Missed yet? No, you didn't. Stop telling lies. Well, you would have been in touch with me. And um, 
Ian McHale says, that was a great film, that thing. Brian Glover was in it. And Jenny Agatha, classic horror. John Landis died it. Yeah, it was a great film. Wayne Norton was the uh, the lead in it. He was the fella. He was the fella in it. Wayne Norton. I think it was Wayne, yeah. Never heard of him, no. Whatever happened to him. Paul Turner says, what do you think of Robert Carlyle, Frank? Great actor. I went to see him on, uh, I said to Ricky, I said, who's your favourite? Can you introduce me to Robert Carlyle? He says, yeah. I said, oh, not. So anyway, I, I was introduced and I said to him, uh, I said, you've got the same surname as me. He said, have I? He said, really? I said, yes. He said, it's spelled differently. I said, no. He said, it's spelled like yours, which is very unusual. He said, yeah, it is. And I went like that. One question to him. I said, are you a descendant of the great historian? And Charles Dickens's mate, Thomas Carlyle, he said, yeah. I said, well, we're relatives then. So am I. And he went, oh. <laughs> Hello, <Yeah. Oscar." laughs> And then, me and, me, and, me and Robert, I went to see him, you know, he has a, a very broad Scottish accent. And you wouldn't think so, would you? Because you've seen him play in Liverpool type characters. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Fantastic. Remember um, Hamish Macbeth, the series with him in it? Yeah, yeah, he played a cop, yeah. Mm. Now is only around Marvel superheroes things. Yes, says it. Yeah, says Ali News. Yeah, that's <laughs> Gladiator film was fantastic. I love Saw so the Russell Crowe film last week called Damn It. I want to watch that. About an ex-cop with dementia reviewing a case it was such a bad plot, the stake at the end, and it left me angry. I won't watch it then. If you see it, watch for the gap, most probably. I don't like that. Thank you, GW, for uh, telling me that. Thank you. But I won't watch that now, Damaged. I was told to watch it. I won't watch it now. I like uh, Crow, though. I, I do like Crow. I think he's a great actor. Mm -hmm. That uh, gladiator, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I love GW again. Oh, yeah. Depends on the accent, says Ali Noose, but I love how you spell it, Frank. What, what, what do you think he means? Depends on the accent, but I love how you spell it, Frank. Does that say it? I don't know. I don't know what he means by that, unfortunately. I'm only a PhD. But I don't understand that. DW, Peter Laurie and M. Yes. No one could have played that part better. Yes. And it was very... Um, Ooh, controversial for the time. Very, very controversial for the time. Um, fantastic. Nice one, ZW. Robert Carlyle plays a Liverpool fan in Cracker. He certainly did. He certainly did. And uh, DW carries on by saying, totally agree there. The American Werewolf was right in there, was right in there in the Anna Horror lineage. Yes, lineage. Love those fi uh, first 15 minutes or uh, um, 15 uh, or minutes when they are on the moors and in the slaughtered lamb. Rick Bales in there in the pub. A yeah. young male. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was. I think he was just starting out then, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. A little mm. 
Look, that's yeah. Brian Glover. What an actor he was. Brilliant, and he, Brian Glover, he was one of a kind, he money. Oh. But you're the LFC, you know, a bit of this going on. But bit of the, uh, Uh, here we, here we go. Frank Tazari Nandel have a sister called Dor. Yeah, she, yeah, that's right. It's like a, it's like Mrs. Wrightus. Uh, she she names her son Arthur. Did you know that, Ray? I did. Yeah, Arthur Wrightus know him well. Like I've had him for years now. <laughs> I'm glad. Jeez, nah, watch your Frank. It's not a bad film. I was I was worse for wear when watching it, so didn't properly follow it. Yeah, that uh, happens when you're not in the right mood, don't it, for films, um, for whatever reason. Worse for wear in, in any fashion that you can get into that condition of being worse for wear. It could be sleep deprivation. You've had a bad day. It could be drink. It could be anything. But uh, if you're not in the right mindset for something, you've got to give it another go. Because I've watched a few things and thought, what contemptible bollocks they were and sat there laughing at it, saying, this is shit. And then I've watched it again when I was in a good mood and thought, why were you like that? At the f-? And then I've, I've remembered I had a cob on or I was tired or I was drunk or something. And um, I ruined it for me. You know what I'm saying? Don't You've got to be in the right headspace is what he's saying. If I, if I never retired and I was still lecturing, and I would have said to you, write me a 3,000 3, uh, words essay of what you just said for punishment. Anyway, no, I won't watch it because I'll be looking at things, I'll be watching out for the gaff, I'll be watching out for certain things, what you said about it. So I won't watch it, unfortunately. Mickey M, Mikey M, Mickey M. No matter what you think of the man, but Phil Collins' song, Against All Odds, another fantastic song, and yes, indeed, a whiter shade, shade of pale, one of the best ever. Yeah. Uh, I've got a mate named Liam Moore. Uh, he does a, well, he did, he was on that and he, no, no faces as it all. What, what's that one where the impersonated singers and things? Yeah, new faces. Oh, was it? And he actually won the lot outright, right up when he had all the winners at the shows and he they had, they had the final show. Uh, he won it. He won it on Phil Collins. And Phil Collins went to see him and he just walked on the stage. And he went, and he said that was the best tribute. He said he's just like me, singing like me. And that was me, uh, my old mate here, uh, Liam Moore. Yeah, like against all odds. Look, look, LFC Adam. Afternoon, Crank, Ray, and chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks for that, on me. Um, Mark Simons, I am Mark. The Raven and Edgar Allan Poe were actually, yeah, Peter Lolly and Vincent Price. The Raven. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something about on, Edgar Allan Poe. Right? And the Raven, and every other film or books, Edgar Allan Poe, right? And there was a lad, there was a lad by the name of uh, James Carling, right? James Carling, who was a little lad. He was a little lad 
this uh, James Carling, and he used to draw in the street, pavement, he used to draw. And he was arrested. He was arrested and put in jail for street art. Yeah. Now, this isn't like uh, street art is like today. Street art. You're going back to the mid 19th century. And he was put in jail for begging. And he wasn't begging, just street art. So what had happened was, when he came out of jail, he went over to America, I think to his cousin or auntie or something like that. He went over to America. And all the drawings you see on Edgar Allan Poe's thing, from the Raven right through to the other there artwork, is by James Carling, the little Liverpool street artist. You didn't know that, did you? No. And over there, he became an alcoholic. So he decided to come back. He decided to come back to Liverpool. And he was penniless. No, and he went to Brown he went to Brownlow Hill Workhouse where he died. James Carling. So there you go. Great artist. Did you like that what I told you? Mm. Hey, there's a, a remake of the Raven with um John Cusack as Edgar Allan Poe and the lovely Alice Eve is in it. It was always worth oh, watching. Gorgeous. I like Alice Eve. I like John Cusack, one of my faves. Mm. Love him. And John Cusack's going, uh, you know, he's gone against the uh, the Western narrative. But the likes of those two dibbies, Sean Penn and Stiller, and Stiller, assholes. Anyway, Paul Turner, the film Cloverfields was it a miss. It was yeah. hard to follow when you was watching the film through a video camera. Oh, the other parts were okay. Yeah, Cloverfield. But he, he made it, I'm not saying a, a, a follow-up, but it was called Clover, Cloverfield 10. Where um, oh, John Goodman. That was all right. That was all right. LFC Aaron and chucks out and chucks out the Mexican. That was in the film, wasn't it? Brilliant that uh, the joke Brian Glover said. You know about these he was an Irish man, an American, a Mexican, or someone else in a, a play. And the plane, you know, was a bit dodgy, so there was only uh, four parachutes with five. <laughs> and he chuck out the Mexican. <laughs> and oh, it's, you know, uh, brilliant, absolutely. LFC. Um, Frank and Ray, what is your favourite genre of films? That's an odd one, man. I'll, I'll go through these. Can you think of your. Don't, sh don't shout them out, though. Okay. And uh, just try and think. Mark Simons, can anyone remember the film Lost Boys? A great soundtrack. Yeah, Lost Boys. Keep a Sutherland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are strained by Echo and the Bunnymen. Yeah. Being one of the. Yeah. Uh, Frank, not Frank. Honest mistake. Sorry, Frank. I bet you're sorry. Uh, apologies. Ah, oh, stop it, being yourself. I know. I just at myself. Um, I had to do something. I was on my iPhone, and uh, and I said, you know, oh, great, you know, best wishes, crank. 
Ian McHale. The first nightmare on Elm Street was a proper scary horror film. Then the sequels tried to move into comedy or a turn of Freddy Krueger into a bloody comedian. Yeah, sequel awful. And uh, The Crow, starring Brandon Lee, is a spot on movie as well, laced with tragedy as he yeah, died on uh, the set. Great young actor, taken far too early, says Ian McHale, and carries on by saying, was just thinking that Mark, just thinking that Mark, Lost Boys was superb. What great soundtrack movies had back in the 70s and 80s? What about um, Apocalypse Now? And Good Morning Vietnam? Brilliant. And Adam says, I love whodunit films myself. Lee, what do you what type type of films do you like? All sorts. I love all sorts of genres. Um you want me to be specific? Uh, who done it? Yeah, who done it to go to go mystery, Agatha Christie or something, um with the uh, twists and turns. Uh I love horror as a genre, but there is there are different types of horror, aren't there? You know, there's horror where you see a lot. I prefer psychological horror where something's left to your imagination. Because I was saying the other day, your imagination is probably the scariest thing you possess. Like in terms of horror, it's what you don't see and what you think of and uh, what you're thinking of after you've seen the film and <laughs> when you're going to sleep that night and stuff like that. And then next time you watch a scary film, are those things still in your head from your imagination? You know what I mean? Well, LFC says, as he said, uh, <clears throat> Eugene, I'll tell you what I like in a moment. Just want to go through these. DW, Chopin's going to end up playing at Alinsky. You wouldn't know who that is, would you? Really? And the film's going to go on and win an Oscar. Can see that happening. They both have a similar look. Dwarfish, tortured and too happy to dress up as soldiers. <laughs> yes. That's a cracker, DW. That's a cracker. Sean Penn. Who's your hand playing, Alensky? Was your hand um, Sean Penn playing him? Or Ben Stella? Both of them can be in it. He can play Zerusian. <laughs> he can both play him at different stages of his life. Hey. Eh? Yeah, you know, with their makeup and that, you can both be him. Yeah. Do you know who Alinsky is? Uh, yeah, I've got a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Paul Turner, can you remember the film Villain starring Anne, Anne, Arnie and Margaret and Burke Douglas? I don't like Burke Douglas. I do not like Bake Douglas, and I try to avoid him. I've seen a there's a couple of good films that I've seen him in. One, he played Doc Holliday in the gunfight at the OK Canal, and the other was uh, Paths of Glory. But other films, I just never liked the man. I just never liked the man. I know I shouldn't say that, but you know, it's, it's just me. Just... Usual Suspects, brilliant film. Yes. Brilliant film. And Paul Turner, Freddy Krueger was Willy out of the sci fi series V. He was, yeah, he was in there. That's how he started off, wasn't it? That's how we started. Yeah, Kirk Douglas had a bit of a dark. Yeah, because an actress went missing in one of the films he was doing. And she just walked out one day and went missing. 
It's like uh, I've never liked him. I've never liked Kirk. There's always something about him. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm between two stools with him. I enjoy some performances, but I don't like. He doesn't look like a nice man. I reckon he was an horrible no, he man behind the scenes. Like nice he yeah. looks like a horrible person. I reckon like yeah. his, his son could be as well, and yeah. that. And uh, I could believe that about him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just don't like him at all. Really Never liked superior him. and all that crap. Like. Yeah. But he was brilliant in um, Paths of Glory. I've got to say that. He was great in Paths of Glory because it was a true story. First, have you seen it? No. I've Black, heard and it white. Black and white. First World War. And about the French soldiers. Fantastic film, but Burke was in it. But that's the yeah, and that and the um, gunfight at the OK Canal, where he's with Bert Lancaster. And there's another dark side of history there as well, with Bert. Twenty One Grams is a good Sean Penn film, says LFC Adam. Kirk Douglas' chin dimple is too severe. It looks like somebody put it in with a chisel, mate. Mine's nice and soft. Mine's all right. His was too severe, like it got put in with a chisel. Well, that's why I grow this, because I've got one, and it goes to the back of my neck. I want some stubble. I'm dead old now, and I still can't get stubble, like the way Sobbers has got it, so you can see my chin dimple better. I want that. It's on my list of what I want for Christmas, some stubble. I don't believe you. My age as well, and I still can't get stubble on my face, on my actual face. I can get it there, but not on my actual face. I can show you a couple of pictures of me with a beard. <laughs> Colour champagne and Robert Duval. Decent, yeah, it was. It was good. No, I like Sean Penn. I liked him as an actor. He was in one with uh, Nicole Kidman. That was a cracking film. Where she was an interpreter. I forget the name of it. She was an interpreter. It was Nicole. And uh, I think he played an intel agent, Sean Penn. It was really good film. If anyone can uh, tell me what it is. <coughs> LFC, Stanley Kubrick. Movie. Of Gloria. Oh, of Gloria. I've heard of it, see, <laughs> that's all. Only because it's Kubrick. Otherwise, I wouldn't know of it. Stanley Kubrick, great man. Uh, great. He was great, wasn't he? Great director. Great director. And what's one of the most, uh, it became controversial. No, no, that film didn't. But he became controversial in modern day. Uh, things. Any idea what it is? And it, 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 it was supposed to be, how can I put this? It was one of the most, well, it was the first historical thing for mankind that happened in 1969. Any idea what it was? 1969. Moon landing. Bang on. Moon landing. Why is it controversial? Speculation on whether it happened. Okay, but where does Stanley Kubrick come into it? Don't know. He said that he did the all of the set and everything for the moon landing to fake it. Yeah. yeah. Think about it. But you don't see. And all the things and everything else. And you know, like the blurry and you know, like 
the blurry stuff with everything. You know, don't forget he was he was a master director. So he had the best technology to like fake things. <clears throat> Um, no, I didn't know he'd come out and said that. No, he never. But, <laughs> but he did like hint at something. Right, you know, right. You know, he said that like it just came out recently. Not that he's alive, like, but he came out and said something recently in a book or in a as you know. And do you know the uh, film with um, that, that double murder that O.J. Simpson was in it? And it was about, in no. no, it was about um, lads going to Mars or somewhere, but they didn't go, and it was all fake. Capricorn one. Yep, there you go. Yeah. That was based on that. That was based on that. Like, Mystic River is another good Sean Penn film. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Duel with Dennis Weaver. Love that film. Yeah, that was great. It went on though, didn't it? It went on. Or am I talking about the right one? Tennis Weaver. No, uh, no, Jewel. What's Harvey Keitel in that? Robert Duval. No, I forget. I forget. Uh, anyone see Bad Lieutenant with Harvey Keitel about a corrupt drug addict? Yeah, investigating the rape of a nun in the 80s New York. It was very controversial. Yeah, Bad Lieutenant, yeah, seen it. Was Nick Cage in that? No, no. Um, I like those uh, type of uh, films. Like Mystic, Mystic River, what uh, LFC says, yeah, crack and film now. I'm looking at another one, yeah, the LFC, Aaron says it, Capricorn. Um, yeah, TW, check it now, Paul Turner, crack and film. If you want it, there's a film called Wind River, Wind River, and it's a Kraken film with Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner, true story, true story, unbelievable film, great acting, great storyline. Have a look at it if you can get it. True story, people. Frank, the monolith, 2001, is the cinema screen, and we are the apes, yes. There's a new film out called, I think they're a couple of years old, I think, called Monolith. I haven't watched it yet, I've got it uh, on me things to watch, funny or not. But you're right. <coughs> yeah, yeah, 2001, Space Odyssey. Yeah, it's quite a startling scene, that isn't it? When you first look at it, like, you know, like mm. <laughs> and you see the ape, don't you? Beating one of the ape up, you know, he, he got a weapon of a bow, and they're us today. Nothing's changed, nothing has changed. And Paul Turner says, TW, it's one of my favorites. That one loved it. The duelists, that was Frank, yes, because the duel with Dennis Weaver. I, I know it now. I know it now. The duelist, 
happened on. The duel was Dennis Weaver. I think he's a um, he's a salesman in and he's just going like on his job. And, and he, I think he's in the desert or somewhere. You know, that I, you know, the way the, the, the Americans have those desert roads, long desert roads, and a a, a big uh, Arctic comes behind them. Yeah, and I'll tell you something about that. That was Steven Spielberg's very first directorial uh, film. That was his uh, first film that he directed. The duel, Dennis Weaver, spot on. Well said there, boys. Well said. Dennis Weaver, the guy used to be McLeod, play McLeod. Yeah, that's it. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a film that was made. No, that, that series was taken from a film. Any idea what it was? Mm. Mm. No, go on. It was taken from... It was taken from a Clint Eastwood film. Called, forget. It'll come to me in a moment. It'll come to me in a moment. Uh, Paul Turner says, Speeds with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. Yes. Do you know that it's, it's a tragic love story, this? Because the pair of them, Keanu, great actor, and Sandra, lovely actors. They actually loved each other and they were terrified to tell each other that they loved each other. That's a true story now. They actually loved each other. Sad though, if you love someone, you stay with them. Anyway, um, Judgment Night from the 1990s, a group of four friends witnesses a murder committed by a gang leader, says uh, Ian McCabe. Then the gang members begin to hunt them down. Emilio Estevez, Cuba Gooding Jr. and Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary's a cracking. Do you know what? You never hear of him now, Dennis Leary. Dead funny he was. Cuba Gooding Jr. is in a lot of uh, trouble. I think he's in jail now. Great actor. I love Cuba Gooding Jr. Excellent actor. Best um, song. Yeah, look. Yeah, Spielberg's first film, yeah. They yeah, are Coogan's Bluff. Thank you, Mark Simons. Mark Simons, you get a gold star. Gold star. And an A+. Plus. A plus. He's a great actor, I think. The duelist. Yeah, it was Ridley Scott. Thanks, LFC. Thank you, mate. Yes, Ridley Scott. What a name. Ridley. Yeah, Is Ridley coming out, Mrs. Scott? Ridley. Wouldn't you say, like, you know, to your mum or your dad, what did you call me that name for? Why couldn't you call me Tommy or Jimmy? Why Ridley? It was meant to be Sydney's son, but your father was pissed when he said it. <laughs> or, the, or, or the priest, or the vicar, you know, baptizing him. I know the eighth bit. <laughs> <laughs> Some great films being mentioned, lads, on today's pod. Great show, Frank and Lee, says Ian McKay. Neither grazie. Grazie mille. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I... <laughs> My mum wanted to call me Elvis. <laughs> but I got his middle name instead. 
Because you imagine, could you imagine, you know, um, someone being named Elvis? Well, I've never met an Aaron before I went to high school. One of the first lads I met in high school who wasn't from my junior school, who was a new lad to me, he was Aaron. And Aaron in high school, the first one I'd ever met. But you know when all these names, you know, like that dynasty, that garbage dynasty, when that came out, and they were naming the, uh, like, the, you know, like kids, Crystal. You know, and they, they them kids today are grown-ups called Crystal. Hey, what's your name? It's Crystal, what's your name? Dominique. You know, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> absolutely bonkers mm -hmm. do you know jason jason pennington hey you know that he's uh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah the producer he's named after jason king okay not bad not bad he's a wing guard yes great him he brought out all the thing he brought out style mm. oh wow and that one he's the wing guard yeah Gary Neville's dad was named Neville Neville. <laughs> yes, that's true. Neville Neville. <laughs> that's a killer, that, isn't it? Blow to you, yeah. Isn't that great, though, but I, I don't say Elvis. She wants to call me. <laughs> oh, mate, you'd have been absolutely cocked, wouldn't you, there? Oh. Went to school about Elvis. You were right there, Elvis. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, Nate, was there any names in school that were just too much and you couldn't help laughing? Um, not really. Everyone just had normal names when I was a kid. It was Paul, Mike, Stay, Lee. Um, yeah. My middle name's Stay. What's your middle name, Frank? Dominic. Dominic. Mine's Stephen with a PH. Yeah. See, all, all our family, they were all named like Francis and Michael and Anthony. You know, it's every. It's no changes. Lee's my mum's middle oh. name, so she gave me a middle name. Yeah. And um, I said to my grandmother once, you know, it's had a, a, a Francis D. Carlyle, you know, thing. And she looked at it and I said, wouldn't it have been lovely if uh, I would have been called, you know, me, me name Dig Darling? And she went, just sound like that. This is my grandmother. I said, I'm only joking. <laughs> That's just Darling Carla. <laughs> Do you know if I get act again? And someone tried to scam me the other day. I might have to cheat. I might have to add. The bank told me, he said, add, add your mother's maiden name. Add your mother's maiden name to your name. So I might have to add her name. And no one knows it, you see. Nobody knows my mother's name. You know, these scammers. Mm. He's trying to get money out of my bank. They had to wait for the new cars. I got it yesterday. I haven't been out to uh, activate it though. It's JK. He's in our bros. Hi, Frank Lee. Oh. I thought I couldn't talk yeah. about football. Mm -hmm. Say again, Lee. Fashionably late. Yeah, I had, I had some things. I tried to give you a call uh, yesterday, Frank, but it's okay. And I learned you last night. Yeah, yeah. So I, thought I was on the... to say hello to you here. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, I'm mentioning you back because I, I was on the phone at the time. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to explain there. And uh, it was my bank. Okay. And they said, uh, add your mother's maiden name to your name. Okay. So I might have to, uh, I'll be next week. So I might have to uh, add my mother's name, maiden name. Mm -hmm. To be named, you already named now. 
You know, when I've always led that the system is designed to get rid of paper money and uh, the amount of fraud and stealing that goes on with digital money and banks and stuff like that, it's out of control. It's more out of control now than it was in the old days, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. They were honestly, they, they were scamming me. Mm -hmm. uh, extracting or trying to, you know, we bang. Yeah, yeah. They were brilliant and stopped it. Yeah. They stopped with JK. Um, uh, anyway, it's just, it's frightening. It's frightening. And when they rang me, the same time as you rang me, unfortunately, I was on the phone to them for ages. Because mm -hmm. they were going backwards and forth, you know, putting different people on. Uh, it's all security. So the yes just said to me, had your, had your mother's maiden name. So I said, okay. Well, we'll have to do that next week. Yeah. Check a guy out on YouTube. His name is Joey B. Toons. His name is. He's an American what, guy. He, he, what, he did, what he does, he goes after guys. He tried to scam other people on the internet and stuff. Um, but he's got some top videos of, of, of the work he does and stuff. But he gets his job done, yeah. you know. Okay. His name's Joey B. Tunes. So everyone okay. can check him out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll check him out. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. check him out. <laughs> because I thought it was act. And he said, you could have been act, you know. But he said, these are uh, very professional. These, these, This is how they make their money, by scamming other people. And they don't realise. Yeah. People don't realise. But they're being scammed. But he said, you're all right. He said, but please, like this other person came on, man, please change. Add your mother's name, maiden name. Do you know, does anybody know your mother's maiden name? I said, no, I think so. So that's what I'll be adding next week. I have to add it on everything, though, even on this. Even on this. And... LFC Aaron says, true that, Frank, because do you know what LFC Aaron, JK, his mother wanted to call him Elvis. Oh, LFC him? Elvis. I've never met anyone called Elvis, I don't think. No. Mm. Nah. No. No. I've never met anyone called Elvis to be on, but there are, there must be people named after them, especially in America, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you wouldn't get anyone there, here in Liverpool going, yeah, Elvis, you're all right, Elvis. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will get around doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, to be honest, I only ever found, yeah, yeah, I love Elvis Costello. I do love Elvis Costello, right? Yeah, well, yeah, Declan, Declan, his name was uh, LFC. Uh, Declan McManus. Ian McHale says, my ma was going to name me brother. Me going to name me ma, going to name me brother Melvin. Imagine growing up in Liverpool in the 80s, called <laughs> Close shaved there, lads. Melvin Bragg. <laughs> Melvin Bragg. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Melvin Bragg. Like, he was a brilliant broadcaster. I love his shows. I even watch them now still. Old reruns of him and that. He's great, Bragg. Mark says, uh, anyone remember a gang film set in the 80s based on ancient Greek story of Greek mercenaries stranded in Persia and have to fight their way back home called The Warriors? Yeah, mm. that was an unbelievable film. Half of the, uh, I think most of the cast are dead now. That was yeah, I watched the video on YouTube, you know, like, where are they now? Some are alive, a handful of them, but quite a few are dead. Um, that was made in 79, or came out in 79. Mm. Great film. Has anybody uh, seen the film 
saying about the ancient Greek. Remember when uh, Ali Noos mentioned um, Troy, the Prabhat? Mm. That was a cracking film. Has anybody ever seen? It's gone out of my bloody mind, would you believe it? Yeah, Troy was all right. I can't say I enjoyed it that much. Like, I thought some of the roles were given to the wrong people. Well, have you ever seen a film called 300? Yeah. With the, I don't like him either. You know, uh, Butler. Yeah, Butler. Mm. Wow. Don't like him either. Um, yes, so... Uh, 300 is a cra- have you seen that JK 300? Yeah, a long time and ago. Talk, 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 and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, yeah, he's a bit crap, Jared Butler, like. He's a bit one-dimensional, isn't he? Oh, he's he's awful. very one-dimensional as an actor. He's awful. Yeah. Can I say shit? He's shit. The left three, Aaron says. Oh, okay. Left it, one nil. They're playing... In the plane, um, oh, they can sod off because they're fans of big gobs, aren't they? About scouts, yeah. and sleep. Uh, so we yeah. made a bloody hell. What's Lester famous for when he's just about here? A bit of pack of the crisps or something in it. It's famous for or some shit like, yeah, for, uh, Gary Lineker and Willie Thorne. Famous um, for that. What's um, about Lester, it? Is it cheese, Lester? She, Lester, she, cheese. Oh, that tells you that, but Fred, Fred it's the thing that's most famous for. Fred Lester. That's, uh, yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a lump of cheese. LFC, Adam. The championship is so refreshing to watch with a bar. Yeah. 100%. Get rid of bar. Yeah. Yeah. Bar's a bit, wouldn't it, in the front? Yeah, yeah. I thought, like the, the whole football game in Hall as a whole is just gone downhill. Everything. Um, prices of kits, prices of tickets for the game, VAR, referees, um, just even with us, you know, like Klopp leaving, Edwards coming in. It's been a bit of a mad season this season. But yeah. VAR should be gone. I think supporters need to get together. And make a decision on what they want to do with VAR. I think if the fans don't want it as a whole, I think they will do something about it, you know. Well, they should. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. I, I think they should. But, you know, I haven't said that. LFC Aaron says, Engel. <laughs> Engel Bert Humper. <laughs> That's right. Look at the spelling of them. <laughs> oh, that's great, isn't it? Engelbert. <laughs> In brackets, spellings. What's Uncle Engelbert? Um? You've got to laugh that name. Where did he get it from? I mean, where did he think it was from? Or did he see it? He thought, all right, I'll call myself a mad name. Because Jerry Dorsey ain't, ain't like, you know, it's just another mad name will call myself, uh, I don't know, Johnny Good Voice, uh, Billy Guitar, uh, <laughs> Engelbert, Hump, I think they are, that one will do. I mean, what the, what, what's a dink and would you want a hump one if you knew what it was? Um, <laughs> and that's for Engelbert, I mean, I, the name Bert's funny anyway, I think, I think a yeah, lot of yeah. way, past people find the name Bert funny. Um, yeah, just but... like Albert Bears, you know what I mean? It's, it's a funny name. So Engel Bears, Humperdinck, I'm sure he was, it, it must have been to, to take the myth, mustn't it? He mustn't have thought it sounds good. He must have thought, I'll make them bloody laugh with this No, name. I don't think so. I don't, th- these were very uh, straightforward people. These wanted to come out 
Um, yeah, they didn't want any comment. Look, Engelbert, something. <laughs> Engelbert. <laughs> it's uh, a serious thing. <clears throat> Please release me where you it, it, You know, that's you couldn't get serious. someone with a funny name singing that, could you? And he, he names us after a great composer, a German composer named Umpeter, Engelbert Umpeter. Right. <laughs> you know that he was a, 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 a classical composer, by the way. Me. No, the original Engelbert Umpeter, yeah. 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 So, anyway, he names himself after that. <laughs> you know, he named that so he's here, Mikhail. And, uh, what's your name, mate? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Engelbert? <laughs> because you know what you said. <laughs> LFC says, uh, he was made to an Elvis. God, full <laughs> shit. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> From Elvis to Engelbert to other parts of the um, silly name Stratosphere. Here we go. I'll tell you what, there's some mad names with their uh, country and western singers, isn't there? Yeah. Do you know uh, what? If if, you know, let's just say this, if I'm honest, Elvis isn't really that silly a name, but it's because it's linked with Elvis that when you hear it, you see Elvis. Like, if for me, I see the fat Elvis in his spangly jumpsuit before he has a tear and dies having a tear on the bog. I oh, don't right. well, you don't have to talk yeah, well, about yeah, yeah, I can just say, well, well, that's what comes to my mind when I think of Elvis. That's what I, I don't think of a young gorgeous Elvis that like look lovely in that I think of a fat bloated <laughs> hamburger and drugs Elvis and he, he had problems didn't he going to the toy because of all the block all the pills that he took all the drugs the prescription drugs and what was his name the manager like the major or something one of he was called the captain Colonel Parker, Colonel Parker. Um, yeah that um, he sounded like a bad man stopping the old Elvis. No, he wouldn't let, yeah, yeah, he wouldn't let him. Hamburgers and that. Oh, well, all right, stuff going on about him now. Come on, old. I uh, couldn't, couldn't agree more with that, JK. Football back in the day when I first followed the game in the mid 70s was a million times better yeah. and enjoyable. It's a contact yeah. sport. It's just uh, even the fans have changed. Like back in the days, the respect between the fans and the players was much, much more now. Like no one would ever raise their voice against, say, Shankly, Paisley, Daglish. You wouldn't even say anything against them guys. You would like no. someone give you a slap. Like that was them days, you know what I mean? But now, like the whole bandwagon jumping on Klopp's back. Uh, and it just shows how football fans have changed over the years. Um, they've lost sort of patience with the game and stuff. And I think VAR, referees, the media, social media has added to that, you know. Um, but definitely football was much better in the old days. Uh, we was on about it the other day about football managers. You can't even mention three, like, three guys we could go for as manager who are world class. Like the old days, you can get a name, you know, centre-backs, centre-forwards and DMs. There's no DMs out there to say, yeah, let's go and get him. He's going to be top for us for the next six, seven years, you know. It's gone downhill, bro. Well, the thing is as well, what you've got, I was on a pod yesterday and I've never heard so much disgust. And, I mean, it wasn't language or anything. But these, I tell you, he was getting lambasted. Mo. Mm -hmm. Jota, Nunes, Diaz, um, Curtis, a couple of others as well, Canete, uh, Robertson, they were just getting them, sell them, and I put, I says, I'm not having this, this is shameful, 
and the host said uh, i never said i said no not you you chat these these jokes on your chat they forget what what, uh, what these lads have done with a brand new mid slobos like that. Right. I'm I'm a, a, yeah, you saw I, I forgot my phone. I think carry on, please carry I on. I swear that they were laying into his yacht as seen as how the man hasn't played in two months or something. Exactly. And like even mm -hmm. yeah, he's hardly played. What are they having to go with him for? He's scored loads when he's been fit. Bro, oh, I don't think I've been but Jotter is one of those players that gets injured, like training, like Canate, you say, but gets injured in training. Jotter gets injured because he gets kicked everywhere because he's brilliant. That, that, I was going to say something then. That fella who injured him last time, that was delivered mm. the way he landed on his knee, full yeah, ball. Yeah. You seen Jotter had went down, and that no guard it was, the knob. And he landed full weight on his yeah. knee, made sure he landed right on his knee and jarred, shook his knee and jarred it. And he's been out for like two and a half months. So mm -hmm. I don't know why Josh was getting any stiff. Yeah, you know what it is, bro? I think half of these guys haven't played football. Like, if you mm. ever twisted your ankle, mm. you're out for like nearly two months. You ain't right for two months. I mean, you twisted ankle you know I mean? painful because it's your ligaments. Painful, bro. It's your yeah, ligaments, yeah. Mate, yeah. Proper ankles are the worst to get over, you know. Um, these guys got boots and uh, treatment and stuff, and they're still yeah. sort of suffering. So their extent of their injury must be pretty bad for them guys to not to be fully, fully fit. When we got sprained ankles, uh, your mum would wrap something around it with turmeric and stuff, you know. Tell but, you. Yeah. yeah. If Jota had been fit in these last two months since he's been out, we'd have more league points. And goals. Yeah, yeah, mm, we would. Yeah, we'd have more league points, we'd have more goals. He'd have scored the odd goal here and there to give us more points, but we've been missing them, like, haven't we? And that's all there is to it. We've missed them and we've missed them badly. But you know, anyone can say we've had injuries, can't they? And we probably yeah. have had injuries, we've just had too many this season. And to key players, we just haven't been able to cover it, and now we've fell off, haven't we? Just hope it isn't like, you know, but good that we're finished this season. I hope we can still come back and beat Fulham and give us a bit of hope for the Everton game. If we can't beat Fulham, it's over. It doesn't matter. Even if City and Arsenal were to lose their next league games, if we can't beat Fulham, it is over. We have to beat Fulham or it's over. That's the end of it. Even though it will be mathematically still possible, it will be realistically impossible to win the title if we don't beat Fulham. And if we yeah. don't, Klopp deserves quite a lot of stick for the way it's gone off the boil right at the end. Because I thought we'd at least go to the end of the season winning and then see what happened. But like we haven't. We've just stopped winning all of a sudden. And Arsenal and City haven't really. But, you know, we'll wait and see. Still got hope. Still got a bit of hope. But now and the way our luck goes and the way things go around us. Uh, but anyway, we uh, Thing is, we've got Trent back, Alisson back, Yotta back. Yeah, Jones, that's too late. Like... We should have come back week. I wish we had them back weeks ago and we'd be all right now. If Alisson yeah, but... and Jota and Trent had been playing all this time, and Robertson... And Canard, God, this team, yeah, we've just had too many injuries, mate. End of story. As good as Quantz has been, we've missed Canard, eh? And I'm annoyed. I've, I've had enough of Canard, eh? Now I want him gone for the money. I want us to recoup our money and get someone who'll be fit more often. It, it might be a centre back who isn't as good as Ibrahim Canard, eh? Like, but I'd rather have a centre back who's a little bit less quality but will play. So, uh, yeah. There you go. That's my uh, thing on Ibrahima Canati now. I've been a big fan for ages, but like, no, I mean, you need to, you, you're going to be on the pitch and you're never on the pitch. That's all there is to it. You're never on the pitch. With centre arts, you need them to be fit constantly and build a partnership like Saliba and Gabriel have done. City get around that by having five top centre arts. We've only got two Canate and Van Dyke. They've got five. Our others are like Kwanza, who no one bloody heard of. He's a kid, just come in the season. Gomez, who just think who's just substandard. And um, who's the other one? 
massive Matt was no changes and about 90 anyway and was free we got him for nothing dead old and he's always injured anyway they've got a kanji guardiol diaz Ake, and stones haven't they yeah they were all four good center halves we've got van dyke and canate mm -hmm. and canate is never ever fit so we've got one good center half virgil and then we've got Massa, who's always injured. Canate, who's always injured. Mm -hmm. uh, Gomez, who ain't that good. And that's it, number you. That's our, yep. that's our going up against City um, selection. That's you why I think we were shown us, mate. If FSG were half yeah, decent right. owners, we'd never have had a, a need for him centre half. So they went out and signed two in COVID. Covid me ass. What well, I don't know. I'm not bothered when Van Dyke got injured and we were defending the title. Mm -hmm. If they were any way serious owners, they went, Yeah, there's 80 million. Go and buy two, two decent centre halves with just 80 million. And they could have bought maybe Canate there and then uh, in January 2020. And someone else, I don't know, Bro, whoever. Uh, Man City have spent nearly 300 million uh, on a defence since Pep's been there. Mm -hmm. um so for me that argument there when anyone says anything about Klopp, just say that pep spent like over 300 million on a defense and mm -hmm. Klopp, like as i said before robertson down the pub job um but and and trent came from the youth system so them two it was sort of free if you understand what i mean we spent money on virgil and canati but everyone else gomez is already there um but man city have gone like really Big on their defence, they've bought Ake, Akanji, guys who I personally don't think are great, but mm -hmm. uh, Pep's got a job done from them. But still, money-wise, it's all about the money, how much a guy gets in the transfer uh, fund. Look at Arteta. Arteta's only been sort of involved in the last two seasons because he's spent over half a billion. Yeah. Come on, man. If that guy was getting the clunkier money that the, the old guys got before... He would be nowhere near Champions League football, bro. So, money does play a big I part. Said, didn't you, you heard what I said on the other night's show, the last time we were on for football. I said Arsenal have outspent us massively whilst yeah. being out of the Champions League for five seasons in a row, I think. And we've mm -hmm. been in it for five seasons in a row, and yet they yeah. still outspent us. If that doesn't yeah. tell you that FSG are lousy owners, then I don't know what does. To me, that just screams lousy owners, like really, really loud and repetitively. But, bro, the tide has changed a lot. But in the old days, there was more FSG sort of out people. And over the last year or so, it's a lot of people sort of on FSG sort of side. Um, well, look, they're not yeah. going anywhere. They are our owners and we're not getting new ones. So yeah, we've got exactly. to they, uh, they are still on uh, the owner's side. They're still on the owner's side. Still on the owner's side. And the yeah. and this Edwards fella. They're not looking at the bigger picture. They're not looking at the bigger picture. I just want to that you know DW he says Eva Wuwa Edwards wants one's name but all the D's take it out. <laughs> Isn't that the equalizer? Oh, yeah, it's funny now. That's a cracker. That. Is that the e Mark, equalizer guy? Equalizer, yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah, the equalizer. Edward Woodward, yeah. yeah. And I said, imagine him running after you. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about Edward Woodward. Uber, Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you tell them out and tell them to piss off. Maybe you look at that. Anyway, uh, absolutely, Lee. Show whatever you were talking about. And it wouldn't surprise me if you were on about Coppish, Frank. I won't watch Coppish, not after that drifty fella. He said, listen to this, JK. I think I told you, I don't know. He turned around after the defeat against them. Um, Chef, Crystal Palace, and said, "That's it. I'm off. I, I, I'm not watching them anymore this season, and I'm going to take a sabbatical next uh, next year." He's a Liverpool supporter, supposedly. Mm -hmm. uh, J.K. So, what do you think of that? Well, 
Sorry about know, that. Uh, I think, on. like, in life, it's like no one has <clears> the <throat> perfect life, you know. Uh, every person, even the royal family, get problems, you know. It's like it's the way of life. Football, the same. You're not going to really get a season where it all goes your way. It can happen, of course, but jumping off the ship while it's sort of getting ready to go down is not really the way uh, Sporting Liverpool is, you know. Uh, Sporting Liverpool is different, man. Uh, sometimes people forget we've got the most Champions Leagues, 19 league titles, you know, like we are the biggest club in England on paper. Um, I think sometimes people forget that. Um, and this new generation of Liverpool fan uh, is all in like the losers, like quitters, you know, um, no winning mentality behind that. Oh, we've got a little bit of a bump here. Oh, let's go back home. No, 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 no. You carry on. You know, you get that, you get that win, whatever happens. And I think the players that are sort of playing like the way the fans are feeling right now, lackluster, not really caring, um, same with rubbish and stuff. Uh, it sort of translates from the fans to the players uh, because the fans have only been going a bit OTT and like really bad in the last week or so, two weeks. And these guys have got social media. What do you reckon the players do when they're at home? They probably jump on Twitter and everything, have a look what what's going on, see what people have written, written in the comments. Uh, we don't know that, um, but I can imagine a lot of players doing that. Um, of course, of course they share. Yeah. Of course they have a look. They're not, or you know, someone will, uh, will all right. So, someone will uh, go on about it and jump on a bandwagon, if you know what I mean. I'm talking That's about sort of uh, like people who write and the likes of uh, footballers, even like brothers or sisters, saying, oh, Have you heard what they're saying about you here? You know, because they're on social media. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So did there you, you get to find, you know, did you find out? Of course they find out. Bro, all they have to do is put a hashtag in the search part, hashtag Van Dyke, hashtag Salah, boom, all the comments will come up. So, yeah. um, but I wonder if these same people, if they were invited to Anfield tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow, next week, just to come and meet the squad, the manager and stuff, would they be saying the same things to Klopp? And no. the players, no, they no. bloody wouldn't, you know, no. they wouldn't. So, for me, Coward. it's all Coward. exactly, bro, exactly. Uh, but when we win the league title this year, they'd be all celebrating. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, it's double standards, it's double standards. We get behind the team, as you know, our little pod gets behind the team. We get we do criticize. Don't get me wrong. And they have a right, we have a right to criticise. But have you ever heard of any of us saying, get shut of him, sell him, sell this, sell that? No, no. Nah, nah. No way. Like, like, for me, Klopp has sort of got it wrong in the last week. And, um, and we, I'm not, but I'm not going to say I want, I'm so happy he's going and stuff. But at the end of the day, football is 90 minutes. And uh, we're at the stage of football uh, this season where we take a game by game. And then, for me, Endo shouldn't have played the first Atalanta game and the Palace game. Hence why he didn't play the game on Thursday against Singer. He wasn't fit. So yeah. that was a mistake by Klopp. So we're not just staying with blindly following Klopp. No, 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 no. Klopp does make sometimes mistakes, you know. Um, yeah. But the way these guys go on about it, like it's like Klopp's sort of an ex-Man United player or something, or a Man United manager or something, and he came to us. You know, he came straight to Liverpool. We could have gone anywhere. And he came to us. And he actually didn't stay for, like, a week or so. He stayed for nine years, bro. Um, yeah. And within them nine years, every season, we're going for something. You know? Every we're heading season, in the right direction. Yeah. We're going for it now. We've already won it too. And I keep saying this to people. How many other teams were a completely brand new midfield, entirely new midfield? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I try to explain by saying they have to try and work out how the other lads play. You know, each other. This is the new midfield. Yeah. 
And they don't take that into consideration. At the beginning of the season, I just wanted, hopefully, to have had, uh, you know, or to get up there and, and, and into a Champions League spot. That's what I was hoping. And okay. now, that's this bonus. I, I never go into a season saying, I want top four. I always go into a season saying, we're going to win this. You know, we're Liverpool. Um Arsenal do that. Top fours are okay. Tottenham, they do that. Top fours are okay. No, no, no. Not us, guys. We, I always say we're going to win it, you know? Um, yeah. But I think uh, it's sort of... When we wanted a DM, we got Endo, okay? We should have bought two DMs. I don't care what anyone else says. We had two DMs this season. We're winning that league. Because yeah. me and you have always had this conversation, uh, Frank, about... The DM position. Without a fit endo there in the last two, three games, we haven't played great. So no. and the and the tight gits didn't put their hand in the pocket over January. They jumped yep. on the FFP bandwagon and thought, okay, it's cool, we didn't have to do nothing, no one else is doing anything, so we won't. But realistically, they could have been thought, you know what, let's do a little shrewd move here. Let's go and get that Andre from South America. Um if it works out, it works out. But it's we needed another Bloody DM in that midfield. And Wait, we only had Endo. Hence oh, why McAllister's oh. there, bro. Wasted. McAllister playing DM. Wasted. He's actually doing okay. I believe he's very good at... But he's wasted, as you said, JK. Wasted. He's wasted. Wasted, bro. You know? Of course he is. Sometimes I'm I blame Klopp for that. Sometimes I blame Klopp for playing position players in wrong positions. I've always said Diaz on the right, Gapko on the left. Um... But them guys never really play in them positions. Klopp sort no. of... I'm not very happy... Like, Salah. He's a but guy so who's in the right. The cut, cut in on the left. Cut in. Always cutting in. Not going out wide and crossing the ball. Salah don't cross the ball. Diaz don't cross the ball. And football is all about crossing the ball. Sorry, because Trent don't cross the ball no more. Because he's always in the middle of the park. You know? So, crossing was our uh, secret weapon that got Klopp that success. All of a sudden, the crossing part of our game is totally out the window. No one crosses the ball. Uh, Trent crossed the ball the other day. What happened? We won a penalty. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And that was the first time Trent was on the first right. Seven minutes. On. First seven minutes. <laughs> first seven minutes. I just want to go yeah. through these, lads. Um, Paul Chain, I wouldn't surprise me if you're on about coppers, right? No, uh, I, I don't watch them anymore. Uh, or oh, ever since that that divvy drifty said about, uh, I'm taking a sabbatical. You know, and uh, I'm not <laughs> watching the other. You know, now it's all over. He's not a proper. And someone should tell them, don't have him on again. He's not a proper supporter. And uh, Cody's mum. Good underrated 70s movie, Harold and Maud with Luke Gordon. The lad who was, the lad who was, in, his, who was in as a 76 now. That's a really Man. sweet title, a lovely, uh, lovely film. I love that film. Well, Paul Turner, I've gone off copper. It was okay at one time. Cal and Matt are okay, but Drifty is well over the top. Thank God for this channel where we have a decent conversation, where we have decent conversations and opinions. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And uh, I watch, says Cody's mum. I watch one of my favourite comedy. Do you know what? I, was so, I couldn't think of the uh, film before Cody's mum. The big job with Sidney James, Dick Emery, Lance Percival, bank robbery. Where they hid the money in a tree. I was talking about it before. It was so funny. Then they got out of jail and they built a prison, uh, not a prison, a, 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 a police station. And the tree was still there, but a big wall around it. And I mentioned about Sylvia Sims. She plays a dizzy blonde in it. It was um, Sid James's girlfriend. St. James's girlfriend and um, he played St. James she played St. James's girlfriend and she walked into it like 
upstairs in the bedroom and there was a big harpoon, big gun, big harpoon. And uh, she said, what's that? He said, it's to catch whales. And she went, oh. And when she went up to the front of it where that big thing is, the arrow, you know, the, the weapon itself, and she said, where do you put the worm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so funny. That's the funniest line I've ever seen in the thing. So thank you, Cody's mum. The big job. Try and, get, try and watch that. Download it. Watch it. It's so funny. And Klopp looked uh, knackers after the game on Thursday, which was sad to see him looking so drained. It wasn't a matter of uh, looking drained. I think he's got fed up. See, look, JK said that he made a terrible mistake. I, I know. Do you ever remember me saying, lads, I think it was a pre-match. We were talking about a pre-match. At Anfield, the Anfield game. And I, 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 we were talking about our players back. I said, well, there's uh, Alisson back. Alisson's back. Why can't they play him? And give him minutes for the Crystal Palace game or, or the, whatever game it was next. Yeah, it was the Crystal Palace game. I said, why don't we uh, just put him in against that Atalanta? And all of a sudden, he's seen the horrible mistakes that Kelleher made. It was, albeit Kelleher played, you know, superb. I'm not taking anything away from the lad. But goalkeepers do have mistakes in them, and you can't go that long without mistakes. And in, to me, to me, those mistakes cost us that. Uh, That's that high. Well, the first one, that was the important one. It gave them confidence. And we were out, basically. Yeah. After that. Now, we weren't straight away. The outfield players had something to say and could have changed it. But the first one was the one, wasn't it? Yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah. And Kelleher should have had the two of the goals. One, he died over one. Well, and the other, he just spilt it instead of holding on. Yeah, but seeing Klopp sort of looking sort of tired, battered and everything, that's what fans don't really understand. Like, the guy's got a personal life as well. He's got a health, uh, yeah. look after his health. Like, these mm. people just see Klopp as a robot. And, mm. um, yeah, and when he yeah. Goes, yeah, yeah they, they got no, like, they don't have no sentiment for the what the guy's actually doing for the club. Yeah. He said when he, when he came into the club, he said, I'm going to leave the club in a better situation. Then when I walked into it, and you know how it was, we had Ben Teke, mm -hmm. we had some donkeys at the club, you know, we had Brendan Rodgers as well. So, and then all of a sudden, Klopp's left us with a lot of youth players, Kwanzaa, Bradley coming through, and um, Bobby Clark, good squad, Bobby Clark for me. Bobby mm -hmm. Clark needs to get more game time. I think what he's probably one of the best out of the youth players. I think Bobby Clark's a top player. Um, but he's gave he's gave the club that, and he's done it now, knowing he's going to go. So Klopp is, has been thinking about the future, you know. If he hasn't thought, sod this, I'm going. It doesn't matter where we finish, you know. Um, but the respect or a bit of uh, a love for the guy, because he's going through certain things. Maybe he is actually peed off about Edwards coming back, and he don't like him around until he's gone, you know. We don't know that. And the thing is, bro, he's never, ever said anything against the owners and the majority of fans now are backing the owners and Edwards more than they are Klopp and Klopp's never ever bad mouth the owners you know and it's a bit of a like godfather sort of situation you know but it's the way the the fans rather back the owners not saying you know what we should have bought another DM this year uh, when the season started instead of just getting endo in you know things like that just make more of a difference in the conversation about Klopp Klopp's been done Absolutely. hard. He's got paid well, but don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But I believe he should have had more money in the bank for the football players that he needed. Do you know one of the comments that was put up on this particular pod? We've only won a, a one Prem in 30 years. We've only won one Prem in 30 years. Do you understand that? I, I went mad. 
I went mad at that comment. It's as though Klopp's been there for 30 years and we've only won one, one prem. He forgets about all the other bad managers that was there before Klopp. Who never won the yeah. league. Yeah, yeah. Like all them guys, Dagley, um, Benitez, Julier, Rogers, all these guys came, never won the league. Klopp comes, he no. wins the league. Could have won more because we because of the points, like one point in it sort of stuff. But uh, if Man City wasn't a club and it was just like a normal 10th, 11th place sort of team, Klopp would have won definitely more Premier Leagues, don't get me wrong. Uh, but you're playing against guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're playing he against like half a quarter of a billion defence every time against Man City. You know, they've got a... They've got a They've got big names, you know, big players, big prices. Grealish cost 100 million. Grealish. <laughs> and he didn't even get a regular starting game, bro. It's like mud. It's mud. So you big don't on Burton and Allison. That's it. Kenny will, will, won us the, uh, the uh, last premiership, you know, before mm -hmm. club. It was Kenny. When he won, he, he nearly, he won a double. And he would have been the first manager to win a double double the year after. But Arsenal beat us 2 0 when we should have battered them. They only had to win. They, even if we used to got beat 1 0 at Anfield, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there. You know what? I thought it was actually yeah, yeah. sunny out. I thought that was sun, like it was real burst and sunlight coming through. But I've looked out the window properly and it's not really sunny. It's, it's it's daylight, but it's not like sunny, sunny. It was just a, a fake effect from my curtains. That. That's Ali Noose, because Ali Noose says about the sun, he said, oh, the sun's just come out, so we stole our sun. He stole our beams of light, Ali Noose. So we'll have to go to Romania to catch the sun now. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, I, I, I forgot my phone. To, I forgot to bring it in. And my daughter was phoning me. And uh, she said, uh, well, she left a message. I can't take you. <laughs> As a night I Ali Nusu gone. <laughs> there he is, there. Look. He's like <laughs> See what I mean? Liverpool fans all over the world, bro. Oh, Liverpool yeah. Liverpool is big time. They're everywhere, you oh, know. Yeah. And I, I just want to see a one United fan base. I'm getting sick and tired of these individuals who try to sort of indirectly separate the fan base. It's like, come on, man. It's like, we're Liverpool. We don't argue with each other. Like, you'll have a different opinion, don't get me bloody wrong. But the bigger picture being, you all got the same sort of mindset, you know. Respect the manager. Uh, we've even sort of, some people have sort of respected the owners, you know. But th yeah. none of these guys are respecting Klopp. Is that's the madness about it? Okay, can I can I just uh, answer this? See this, Cody's mum. What's your favourite Alfred Hitchcock movies? He wants to sack the legends, and this is why I put this up. Henry Mancini from Frenzy Soundtrack. Okay, do you know Henry Mancini? In uh, I went over to uh, Italy. And I went to sort of cemetery, you know, as you do, visiting families, graves and that. And we've got like a little mausoleum and inside is uh, the Mancini, that's how you pronounce it, Mancini uh, family in ours, in our uh, mausoleum. And uh, I said to so I said, Mancini. He said, yes, uh, the famous composer, you know, the American composer, is related to you, you know, the, the Valanti family. Mm -hmm. Go away, he said, yeah. I was made up with that. That's why I'm not very musical. <laughs> I think my me, me little grandson, my mother was very musical. Pianist, unbelievable. And um, my little granddaughter, she could read and play uh, the piano at the age of four. And she's still playing the piano today. She just loves it, loves musicals. So maybe she And Ali Nusi, how about this? 
How about this, JK? I am here always. By the way, in Romania, the biggest fan club is Liverpool fan club. How about that? There you go. Nice to hear. I think in uh, Germany, US, also big fan bases. Australia, yeah. It's, uh, it's the joke. LFC, Adam. Why shouldn't you? Why why shouldn't you ever fall in love with a tennis player? To them, love means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Paul Turner, it's a shame how things have turned out, especially when the kids played and got us through a tricky time. Now the senior players are back. We should be in a better position. That's mm -hmm. a very good comment. Exactly. Excellent comment. Excellent. Um, Aaron again. What's the best thing about living in Switzerland? I'm not sure, but the flag is is a big plus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I think he's getting them out of a uh, Christmas crackers. I think he's pulling the Christmas crackers that that's left over from Christmas. The bad jokes. But anyway, listen, lads, um, you don't forget tomorrow. Tomorrow, we've got a, a post match. Special. Yeah, you've got a post match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're here, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> we've got a special. Yeah, we've got a uh, post match tomorrow. And uh, I want to ask you, uh, JK, what's your prediction for tomorrow? All right, I'll tell you what, who do you think should play? Up top. In, uh, up top, yeah. I'm going Yota, Darwin, Salah. Mm -hmm. And Yota and Darwin can switch. That's what they were doing before they got injured. They were playing in their positions, but they were switching. And that's what that, it sort of confuses the, the defense. So yeah. I'm going Yota, Darwin, Salah. Yeah. I think Diaz, Gapko, mm, nah. No. Not for me. Yeah, well. Yeah, they were going. Who are you going with, uh, Frank? Me? That nah, you've mm -hmm. just said. Yeah, yeah. You've just said. And, um, see. The only thing is uh, Jota. Do we start him or, you know, shall we give him mm -hmm. a full either first or second half? Start him. I'm starting him. Um, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Bring, bring him off. Anytime. Start him, take him off. Yeah, yeah. Start him, take him off. Then you can bring either Diaz or Gapko on. We've got all our five <laughs> all fit now. You know, we've got five of our attackers fit, six games. Work it out between them. Who's going to start this, that, and the other? But get the goals, you know. Well, but I think uh, Yota looked sort of. He didn't get involved the other day with uh, Darwin. Um, hence, why I would start them to. Um, but Gapko looks better and Elliot when they come off the bench instead of starting it, you know. So he's got nothing to risk or lose, you know. Hopefully, Darwin is fit, bro. I, the only reason Darwin's not looking good. He's not 100% fit. No, 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 no. Well, exactly. Exactly. And Klopp said that in his uh, press conference, didn't he? Post-match press conference. He said, people are not realising these lads, and he mentioned from uh, Jones to Jota to Darwin to Mo. He said, these have all had bad injuries and they're coming back. They're trying to get into the rhythm. But as I said on uh, that certain pod, I said, uh, you know, these same lads have got us to where we are. We're fighting for a league and people are giving up and calling Klopp out. They're calling them out. Much more or less saying, what's he ever done for us? 
That's what I don't like. Yeah, that's what I don't like. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. You don't get behind the team. You should. No matter if you don't like, say, like Gravenberg. I don't like him. I, I I don't think he'll improve. But I'm not going to call him for everything. I just say I don't think he's going to improve the lad. Mm-hmm. And that, that's just my opinion. But you don't call him for everything. I don't call out. I don't say, you know, I did say I've had enough of them. You know what I mean? The missed chances. I'm talking about Darwin here. I, you know, he can't go on missing these chances, but not once have I said get rid of him. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Frank. Has Lee gone again? Yeah, he's gone again. Fucking nuisance. Yeah, but I think um, it turns into agendas, bro. And uh, on social media, because they don't want to look like an idiot, they'll carry on with that agenda until they're justified. Then they can say, "Ah, oh, oh, I told you so." Um, like, come on, man! The, the guys who are moaning about these guys, they know themselves they're not playing great. Darwin knows he hasn't scored for a bit of long time. He knows, man. You know what I mean? Um, as I said as well, when you played football, you've got injured. It takes a bit of time to get your uh, trust back into your leg, wherever you got hurt, to so that you can handle an injury, uh, getting hit again. You know. And when you get that feeling back, think, yeah, I can handle it, boom, you carry on then. But injuries play a big part in the way clubs are sort of, uh, how they run and how their flow is and how they win games and stuff. We've had loads of injuries, I don't care. A lot of injuries. Well, yeah. As uh, Arthur Schofield says, hi, Frank, fella chats. Nice to see you are getting over decent, disappointing results. Stay focused. Never get over disappointing results. And Ali Noosh, I will never understand why we bought Gravenberg and why we didn't sell, sell Mo for 250 million euros. That's only me. Well, we can't really say anything now because we're coming up to the end of the season. We have a hell of a lot to play for we've still got a lot to play people don't where, where have you been we've still got a lot to play for and the biggest prize that we're playing for is the premiership and people are you know they've given up they've given up Yeah, it's not no problem. Yeah, do it. Uh, yeah, but I think Salah, um, if we win the league this season, <coughs> it's only because Salah scored all, all them goals before he got injured. If we win the league this season, it's because of Salah. He's the highest goal scorer, got a lot of assists. So, but the money last season, what they were offering, it was crazy. Um, but I don't feel like he wanted to go anyway. Yeah, yeah, there's something. What are, what are Ali saying? A Romanian. Ali wants to sell his house. I, re- I, I read today in the news. I really hope Ali will stay. I, I think he's buying a new one. Yeah. I'll have his old house. Where is um, the house that he's selling? Next door to you. <laughs> <laughs> Get tickets, Lee sorted. Uh. Ali's staying, mate. Don't worry, uh, Ali. Ali's staying. Give all our final six. Give all our. Give all for the final six games on and off the pitch. We can still win the league. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Of course we can. Stay. I'm not saying stay positive and all that. I'm not saying that. But just back the team up. 
just please just back the team that's all back the lance I think um, Robertson is, uh, is is finished as a left back. That's in my opinion, and he mm -hmm. has been last season. He was dreadful. And when people look at it, you know, they say, "Well, who's our best left back?" And they say Robertson. You see what I mean? So, you know, a left back is needed, in my opinion. A left sided centre back is needed, my opinion. We need uh, a number six, we need a defensive midfielder. And I'm, I'm talking about quality plays, you know. I'm not talking about like a potential player. And that's why, JK, I was fuming that we never went after and got Andre from uh, Fulhamenzi. That's why I, I was fuming over that. So am I. Still. I'm having a massive fume over that. I wanted him. And he was dead cheap as well. He was only 30 million. And they were too tight to buy him. Thank you. Even if we went for Fulham's Paulinia, we would have yeah. won this league, no problem. End of story. Even yeah. if he cost, I don't care how old he was. He's 28. He's got another three yeah. years. Like, get him in, you know. I'm around again. I was like, uh, around. Andre from Brazil, and I thought he was like, it's even if like we didn't see much of him, like from January onwards, because he was bedding in, I still weren't bothered because we'd have bought him and he'd be halfway ready for next, well, he'd be sort of ready for next season if we'd have got him in January. He's been like, you know, uh, settling in with his, with his family. And all that jazz and um, like learning a few things, just like basic things. And he'd be half ready to, well, he'd be in a better position, wouldn't he, than say we bought him this summer. Like we should have bought him in January if we're going to buy him. Just buy him. He's good. Buy him. And he's cheap. We want him. There you go. FSG, they always let you down, mate. The rubbish. FSG are rubbish owners. Well, this is it, isn't it? You know, <coughs> I've said it numerous occasions. You've said it. Lots of other people have said it. Lots. By saying, if he would have had more money thrown on the pitch, we would have won. I, 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 this is me. I think we would have uh, won definitely a couple of more Champions Leagues. I do know that. 100%. And also one or two premierships. If he was a bad more money. And one of the, uh, the podders who've got great respect for, to be honest, uh, he said, well, no, it was bad luck that lost, lost us that. And I said, no. If that more if two more quality players would have been in our side, we just got we instead of drawing, we would have won the games to win the league. You know, when we got beat by a point, would you agree with, with that? What I've said, it wasn't an awful lot of money they needed to invest to make us more successful than we've been on the yeah. clock, just yeah, a yeah, reasonable no, amount, yeah, yeah. not an ostentatious yeah. amount. A reasonable amount, and we could have done so much better under Jurgen Klopp. We'd have won several more trophies without a doubt. We'd never have, we would have retained the league title in 2020 21 if they'd have spent money on some centre halves instead of getting his cap back on loan and buying Ben Davies for 500 million. Is that all they could find? Five, sorry, five, 500,000, 500, sorry. Half a million, five hundred thousand. What was that? What a bunch of tight wads. Mello, Kabak, um, like they put we had Reese Williams and Nat Phillips playing centre backs, you know. Reese Williams, um, yeah. Like we like bottom of the barrel, sort of like okay. The bet the blessing in disguise is Connor Bradley and Kwanzaa have played more games this season and they're doing well. Don't get me wrong, but a club on our level should not be sort of at the brink where the only option is a youth player, you know? 
Well, you get the excuses from uh, the fans saying about uh, FFP. Oh, well, we won't break that, you know, at least, you know, we're being run by uh, properly and not. Fuck off. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to say that. But what, mm. I, what I mean is, oh, I'm sorry to say that. But what I mean is, is um, it's a matter of put, we could afford to spend 200 million without going over uh, financial fair play. You know that, don't you? Mm-hmm. So they, you know, the fans. I don't know where they're coming from with their brains. You know, whether they've got any, I don't know. And saying, uh, "Well, we don't want to break the fair, the, the fair play, financial fair play thing." And they're not, they're not thinking that we could have spent two hundred million more. So they're just going along with the spin from uh, FSG. Yeah, of course, of and course. I people. knew. I knew as soon as that window opened, we're not doing nothing with what happened to Everton, Forest, and oh, Man City and Chelsea might get done. Boom. Owners thought bonus, Brucey. We didn't have to give Klopp any more money before he goes. No. There exactly. You go. There you go. So if you're winners as an owner, you if you're in you the first place, never mind anymore. You didn't give money. You know what I mean, bro? Like, have no money since he got here. Never. We sold Coutinho, hence why we got Virgil and Alisson. We didn't keep Coutinho and brought them guys in. No, 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 no. We a sold Coutinho. Spend and power would have been great, whether he was in a Dortmund with spend and power or at Liverpool with spend and power. He was at clubs that couldn't compete with their rivals. In Germany, it's only Bayern, but that's enough in Germany. If you can't beat Bayern, you don't win nothing. Um, in this country, we had a few rivals, Chelsea, City, spending their heads off like with Abramovich, and then we had, we've got the bloody Sheikh Mansour fella. But um, it's just horrible, isn't it, when you can't compete and we haven't... Can, I, can I answer there, Cody's mum? Hmm? <laughs> she says, sorry, I thought this was a TV and movies pub, but I do like Diego Jotter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Diego... <laughs> Listen, Cody's mum, it is it is a television, uh, film and television, and we have been talking from the beginning, you know, we started at 10.30, and we have been covering lots and lots of films and TV, and once uh, the lads go on, and I made up that you said about the big job, I'm absolutely delighted, because I was trying to think of that uh, particular film uh, with Sidney James and Sylvia Sims. I just think, you know, it was a great film. It was very, very funny. And I couldn't think of the title. And I was even talking about it the other week as well. Uh, but I just couldn't think of the uh, the title. But thank you so much. And we always started... Uh, we started 10.30 of a Saturday morning. Sometimes we go in midweek if there's no games. So we might be having one. I don't know. I I, no, I don't know. We're going to keep it for Saturday mornings for the time being uh, until the summer comes. Now, Paul Turner says uh, it will give us a boost if Arsenal drop points at Wolves today before we play tomorrow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Ali News, guys, still, Diaz. In less than Adrian and Gravenberg, and he does, he does. Salah as a target man, and a guy who earns 18 million per year needs to do more. Who earns 18 million a year? I will always miss Mane. For me, Mane was our engine room for years. Mm. Yeah, Mane sort of, he was the. Him and Bobby, they were, the, they were the guys, man. Um, yeah, he was, he was inspirational, like, wasn't he, man? He was, uh, he was tireless. He was, he was you a know brilliant what, signing, he was a brilliant sign. We got him quickly, didn't we? When when Jürgen came in, he was one of the first, first signs. Well, he was, for me, he you was know, already here. Yeah. But he only wanted to say money is uh, Milner. Hmm. Well, I the, think uh, about Milner. Milner was finished. 
And Will because he came be on for, and because he came on for twenty minutes or so, you know, they said, "Oh, great, Jenny Millie, Millie, great, Jenny Millie," and uh, you know, hang on a minute. He never ever started. Well, he did start games, but he's always substituted because he couldn't last out. And that's what we need: players to last the game. Yeah, but I think Milner was more like uh, a guy who was off the field in training, having chin wags with the players. You know that type of guy in the squad. Yeah. And, and also, bro, um, I've seen a video of Henderson uh, in a game. And the amount of talking Henderson done throughout the whole game, like Robertson wins the ball back and kicks it off the guy and he goes for a goal kick. He's like, well done, Robbo. Nice one, bro. You know, like these sort of comments throughout the whole 90 minutes, bro. Virgil, does he do that? I don't really see him geeing up the other guys saying, well done, bro. Well done, or Henderson did that. And that's why people don't understand about Henderson. His talent was his mouth. <laughs> it sounds bad, but that was his talent. He was good with his vocals. He knew what to say at the right time. Trent, all of them. Henderson always gave them like encouragement. Well done, lad. Go on. Like, pass it now or whatever. And I think sometimes a club needs that type of captain, you know, who's a bit more vocal, a bit more encouraging. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've, missed, we've missed Henderson and Milner. You can see that, like, that the... Um... Their presence with the talking and that like has uh, probably been missed, Anna. Because the, the, but it's only since we've gone off the boil, you've looked at a few of them and thought they look quiet on the pitch as well. Because yeah. they're new, and obviously they're not. You know, they don't. A lot of them don't speak that much English. Like Darwin, what's he gonna say? He can only speak a couple <laughs> of words, can he? <laughs> so um, true, bro. True, but you yeah. can, they all understand him, bro. It's that that that. Uh, body language, you know, on the pitch, like, come on, like, you can say it in any language, you know what you're saying, you know, um, yeah. I miss that, I miss that energy from some of our players to, like, say, against Palace, for example, say, come on, like, let's do something here, like, you know, that, oomph. we're missing that, bro. Can I just uh, answer the, uh, to someone there, and it's uh, Sammy Brennan, and he says, hello, Frank, I'm on my dinner, so just going to catch oh. you up. Right, Sammy, I got that done, mate. Look, the, the, Sammy, that's his uncle here. And these are all my mates. There's me there. And Looking where are you in this hedonistic utopia that is pictured? There I am there. I've got putting the fucking hell well, it's got shine on it, so I can't see really a whole lot like where you're. There I am, there. I'm looking. Bring it down a bit, a bit, bro. Jesus Christ, my neck's killing me. <laughs> Child, blimey, I'm like a contortionist. Hang on. Okay, I'll now we can see it. All right, all right, God. All right. Yeah, go there on. I am, there, look. Hang on, wait. Where's my finger? There I am, there. See there? Looking away. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah Do that's the boss <laughs> <laughs> Looking Is away at something. It's like a contortion. <laughs> just, just trying to show this. But anyway, yeah, Sammy. I get in that pose a lot, looking away. Yeah. Sammy, thanks for uh, sending me uh, one of the pictures up and Jason uh, blew it up for me. I'm putting it in a frame, actually, because... These are lovely, dear friends who I love very much, and uh, most of them are dead. And there's another one of them who's uh, seriously ill. And, you know... Oh, yeah, it's, it's his dad, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Sammy. That's his dad. That's his dad, yeah, there. Thank God, see? There. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. There. Him. Mm. One... Funny man. One funny right, man. I used to live in my grandmother's and he lives on the on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Funny. Honestly, God. But my mates, you know, on that photo, so, you know, I've lost a couple. I lost two brothers. Uh, well, two of them were on that photo. Uh, so close to one another. You know, died. 
Vai verene je. Luftu. Ah, uh, thanks, Shami, for uh, popping in, mate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Ian McHale says, I love Mane, such a super fit and skillful footballer. That goal he scored away at Arsenal was one of the best yeah. goals you ever. Yes. Yeah, it was in yeah. <laughs> the old jumped on Klopp and he broke his glasses, remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he even said that our someone was on his back, you know, like and you were a kid and he used to do little piggybacks. That goal was next level. That like I tell you the truth, bro. Before we got Mane, I always said he looked like a Man United player. I don't really want him at Liverpool. And then, boom, he come on and he, he was big time. And I was like, sometimes I like to be disappointed in that sort of way. You know, where you think, oh, this guy's not for us. And then he comes and just does the business and stuff. So, that's why you should back every player, bro. No matter, even if you don't might not like him 100%. Like Curtis Jones and, um, and Diaz, for me, are the two who should be doing more. Um, yeah. but you support the lads, you know? Yeah. Well, Ali News uh, says, let me go through these, please. Ali says, uh, Milner was a hard worker, Henderson as well. But Ali, Milner was past the sell by day. That's what I was trying to say. He never started the game and came on a sub late on in the game. Also, if he did start the game, he was always substituted because he was old. He just couldn't last the pace. He might have run for about 10, 12 minutes, keeping up at the pace, but fellas were just skimming him. They were just flying past him. And sometimes he he, he got a double booking in a game. Then he, he was sent up twice, wasn't he? When he was coming to the end of his... Okay. Yeah, Milner, another guy, not a top footballer, but bought experience and say some peace into the squad. Uh, he did what I think he, him and Henderson were the two guys who sort of kept the flow in the like on the pitch, you know. But I think Milner lasted two years too long with us. He should have gone. I just wanted to uh, answer this, uh, and it's from uh, Arthur Schofield. Incidentally, Frank, many years back, I think when I was talking about my mother being a great pianist and my little granddaughter, and my uncles as well, they were unbelievable. That's how I love classical music, because they used to play, especially my uncle Franco, he played uh, fantastic uh, classical music, you know, Puccini and Verdi and even Tchaikovsky. Unbelievable. Anyway, incidentally, Frank, many years back, I worked with, the, with a great guy, Frank Valerio. I know the Valerios. He played the piano, was a comedian too. He once told me his brother, Tony Valerio, played the piano for Billy Cotton. You wouldn't know who Billy Cotton is, would you? He always used to shout, wakey, wakey. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, the old big bands. Okay. I'm bloody age away. I'm giving me age away, lads. Giving me age away. And uh, Ali says, uh, for me, Mane is the top five best players I saw at Liverpool since I support them. My top five is Suarez, Stevie, Mane, Torres, Salah. Hey, yeah, there's a cracker, uh, uh, JK and you, Lee. Right. Now, Ali's top five, Suarez, Stevie, Mane, Torres, Saleh. Would any of you argue with that? Well, he, Ali's obviously been watching us since about when he, 2006. 2005. Was he an argue with that? Um, no, no, because they've been our best players like in that period, haven't they? In the period he's been watching us, probably that they've been, right. they've been our right. best players. JK, would you argue with that? Uh, I'll keep Suarez, keep Stevie G and Salah, 
and then I'll swap Marley and Torres for Virgil and uh, Alison. Oh. Oh. All right, well, I always, you know, like a goalkeeper. I've said for years, the best goalkeeper I've seen play was Ray Clements for Liverpool. Now, don't forget, I go right back. Ray Clements. And then when Ali came along, Ali's the best player, uh, you know, keeper. So I always leave them out of, you know, outfield players. So leave, uh, leave, leave Ali out. So, and as another player, outfield player to that, what you just said. Okay. Um... Bobby. Bobby Firmino. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What a guy. Wow. See what I mean? Now I can go back and say, uh, I've got to answer this beautiful lady. I think it's a beautiful lady. I'm not quite so sure. Cozy's mom. Cozy's mom. Thank you. I'll try to get back here early next time for some classic movies. So there's pints and a glass of wine. Thank you, Cody's mum. Thank you for the uh, the pints and the glass of wine. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I've got to answer this. Uh, they are all going, Frank, one by one. That's the, all the boys there. It's nice to see me, Dad, and as opposed, but for you, it must bring back fantastic memories with the Farrells, Dalton, and the dressed Dalton. John Dalton, you're talking about. Don't make them like them, that no more. No. Oh. Joey and Tony Farrell, two great footballers. Brothers and the gun now he passed. And it really sickens me, you know. It really does because he did one by one. And I was just told the, uh, the other night that uh, John Vaughan's dead and buried. I couldn't believe it. And he only lives below me. This is this is how isolated I am. No one knocks on the door. He didn't even know that I knew you. Well, Ali news for sure. Ali and Virgil in the top ten. I am so upset because Suarez left after three years. He was so good, full package player. I support LFC since two thousand. I'm going to tell you something about Suarez. I had a lad on my show, Dave Kirby. And uh, Dave is a playwright. And he wrote like Brick up the Mersey. He, he wrote loads, loads of things, loads, loads and loads of things. He's written their uh, poetry for their LFC as well. He's written for them. And I had him on my show. And I said about Suarez leaving. And he said to me, and he was annoyed actually. When he said this, he said, listen, Frank, you know my contacts are at Anfield. I said, yes, I do. And he said, let me tell you, Suarez pleaded with that Irishman, please let me stay for another year so I can play in the Champions League with, for Liverpool, please. And the Irishman said, no, you're going. And the Irishman replaced them with Ricky Lambert. To me, Suarez, you might not agree with me here. To me, you, you know, you won't agree. He was forced out, in other words. Torres was forced out. Anyway, that's by the by. Suarez was the greatest player to put on a jersey with the beard on. Would anyone agree with that? 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, God. The best footballer I've ever seen with my own two eyes, live. Like, what a player. Unbelievable. He was the best. He 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 was at one point the best player in the world. At one point. Yeah. When Messi and Ronaldo Close. were not it. He was explosive. He was exciting. He was just too much, wasn't he? Too much. Yeah, what a player, man. You know, I, I, and yeah, there's one. I, I didn't even see this. Paul Turner, what's your thoughts on Fernando Torres now? At the time, I was upset like every other Reds when he left, but time has moved on, and I was glad to see him get a good reception. Do you know what? He was forced out, Paul. Believe me, mate, he was forced yeah, yeah. out. He was gone. His footballing days were over when he left. Yeah. He didn't want to play for Chet. There's no way. He, he, lo he was moving in. He just spent two million quid on his bloody house. And he was moving in within two weeks. And all of a sudden, he was gone to Chelsea. Yeah. For that Andy Carroll. It really annoys me when, uh, uh, you know, Fernando Torres was fantastic. He scores one of the best goals you'll ever see at Anfield against Blackburn. When he chested the ball, he had it back to the goal. He was at a mad angle, chested the ball, put it on his tie and volleyed it. Volleyed it right into the top corner. From an angle in the Annie Rolls end. Unbelievable goal. Fernando Torres. The goals he scored against Everton. The goals he scored against Marseille. They're just like they're, that, that, that's just like a little drop in the ocean what he did for Liverpool. What the goals he scored. Fernando Torres, one of the greats. For LFC and he loves Liverpool. He's got a tattoo for God's sake. I always remember him. Who was it for? It was uh, Atletico and he has a headband. He has a headband where you never walk alone on. Oh no, it was a sweatband on his wrist. Never walk alone. <laughs> That's what you call dedication. And not all the fucking spin that you get off assholes having a clue. Ali Nusha, we will never have a forward like him. Never. He was top class in every spot. Sh shooting, dribble, headers, agility, stamina. He had everything. Absolutely. Ali. I agree, Lewis was our best player ever. He used to create his own goals, didn't need through balls or crosses. Very good point, and he didn't, did he? He didn't. <laughs> Imagine the players. I, I go back. The players that we had were phenomenal. One of the one of the great players, and he's only he, he's just got a, like a title, but they didn't know he was a great footballer as well. He never passed the ball, he never gave the ball away or anything, and he was dead hard on the pitch. Tommy Smith, the Anfield Iron, he was an unbelievable player, Tommy Smith. And because he was rough and tough. Yeah. Yeah, this thing. Just let me say this. Oh, Frank, as the song says, his armband proved he was a red. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Sally. Thanks. And, uh, Paul Turner, I can believe that, Frank. He was my favourite foreign player. I was gutted when he left. But you can see now he loves Liverpool and he spent a lot of time 
after the Legends game. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you who else is a great Liverpool fan. I'll make you cry now. And it's Xabi Alonso. He's, he come, he's been coming over to watch Liverpool play when he's got time. Especially when he was playing for Bayern and Real. So what have you got to what have you got to say about him when he says uh, I'm not coming to Liverpool? Why does he refuse the job? Why? Because our best GM wrote the owners <clears throat> and he wants some money to spend and they won't give him any of your they already told him <clears throat> when you come in you'll be on less budget than Jurgen Klopp. We we'll expect you to sell your two best players every summer. And then we replace them with players for a tenth of what you got for them. That's what the future is as our manager. So we said, all right, so stay at Leverkusen. Let's just uh, I'm to go on to the Ali says uh, this is about uh, Nando. He was pushed out the door because at the time we have no funds. We need the money from Chelsea and the money from City to Sterling. I like Sterling a lot. No, Sterling was a, he, he was just a, a little kid. There was no money for, needed for him, to be honest. Ali, you've got it wrong there, fella. But don't worry. Frank, I've got to run some errands. What time are you on till here? Because um, I, I, I don't drive. No, don't to... worry. Don't worry. I'm only fi I've finished by half five. <laughs> I don't drive, so like I've got to catch public transport to go and run these errands and then get public transport back to get home and, and that like. Um, so well, well, all right, I'll, don't worry, I'll, I'll be finishing very soon. I said, okay. Is it, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, do you want me to just, can I just and leave you with JK or do you want me to stay or what? I'd love okay. you to stay. I, I, I can't resist you, see. Okay, stops. Anyway, it's just like what Oscar Wilde says, Lee. I can resist anything except temptation. Temptation. It's a great one, that, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, Bonkers LFC, Lewis Garcia, yes. Yusef, Maxi Rodriguez. I loved him. There's that trick down there I follow. I wonder if that's a moment. Uh, hey, Jabby says he stays at Leverkusen. and that's not a normal amount. He, he knows not to leave too early is a good one. Says Justin F. Anti. I was never a big Sterling fan. 50 million were good business, but I was done with him as an ex-red when he did the Gomez fight. Yeah, it was, because, it, it, yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Made him look a dickhead. Yeah. All right, well, we have many good players, but not at Suarez level or Stevie G level. They were great, but, you know, the, See, I could go back to Sooness. I could go back to Alan Anson, Mark Lawrence. Great players. Great Terry McDermott. Terry McDermott scored. I have three goals for my top three. Terry McDermott first, Terry McDermott second, and Jan Mulby third. Um, so Terry McDermott, can you remember that he was the first Liverpool player in history to score in a European Cup final? Mm. Did you know? But oh, yeah. Yeah, in Rome. Yeah. Roma! Mamma mia! Okay. He had been, we have scored in a European final before, the one against Dortmund, haven't we? Yeah. In the Cup Winners Cup final. 
No, I'm not sure. I'm talking European Cup, the big Yeah, I know, mate. I know. Big years, big years I'm talking about. <coughs> right, lads, I'm going to finish. Um, I've got to answer a couple of texts. My daughter texted me. So I'm sitting here on my own all bloody day now. She said, Dad, I can't come down for you. I'm at work to take me shopping, you see. So anyway, she's coming down tomorrow. Defo tomorrow. That'll be the day. She would have texted me last night. She said that she fell asleep when uh, she's supposed to. Anyway, Sammy says, uh, while working on Liverpool 1, I was walking up Church Street and into the streets where the cut. Oh, the Carnarvon put the uh, castle pub is now, and saw my uh, my amazement. Torres standing alone with his dog, a bulldog, outside MS. Yeah, Sammy, did you know that I was the historical con oh, his historical consultant for Liverpool One, well, and I actually named six places. Sammy, that's genuine, man. Me. Six places. And uh, Ali Noose, enjoy your weekend, guys. Barbecue. To See, that's all right for him, isn't he? He's having a barbecue. It's freezing here. <laughs> and Sammy says, yeah, I do. I think so. Thanks, so. But when you're walking down Lord Street, I'll just say this one, and you look at their Keys Court, where the clock is, you know. Uh, I named that. Me. Bit lonely. And Ian McKay says, the sun's coming out at three o'clock, Lee. Of course. But Terry Mack must be the first person to have two goals disallowed in the League Cup final and replay in the 78 with that pop. Yes. 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 And uh, our Ali laughs. Our Ali laughs. Enjoy your weekend to this little barbecue. We can't afford a barbecue. I can't anyway. I've got no sausage. sausages. Do you know what I knew a fella, you know? Um, Cracker fella. He was what you call it. Um, he's what you call it. A politician. And anyway, I met him. I was with my ex one day. And I went, oh, hello. And he went, oh, hello. And uh, he said, I'm just going to the supermarket. I said, oh, yeah. I said, uh, we've just been in. You know, because we were going in. And he went, uh, oh, uh, she forgot to bring the sausages in. I said, what? He said, she forgot to bring the sausages in. And that's... <laughs> That's, oh, and I just burst out laughing. I thought he was messing. And I seen him a couple of years later. And I said to him, that's how I met you outside the supermarket. And you said, yeah. We might forgot to bring the sausage thing. But he actually spoke like that. I didn't know. It's sausage. Anyway, nice fella. But don't ask him to say sausages or you'd start laughing. <laughs> hey, Mikhail, get the embrace of air, Eddie. Yes, <laughs> embrace of air. I am not the richest guy, but I think I'm okay. I am only team leader at Vodafone, not millionaire, says Ali Moose. You're a millionaire, Ali, if you own, if you own um, Vodafone. And uh, we did get four cracking goals against Fulham last uh, bonkers. Yes, yes. And uh, remember the dog on that's life, Frank. <laughs> you're nice, you're nice. What? Sorry, she. The blood and sweat I gave on that place should be good. Some callers after me. It's like Sally Lad because you're an hard worker. Oh, brilliant. 
the left seat forever. You better believe it, says Arthur Schofield. Yes. Well, listen, uh, JK, see you tomorrow. So it, bro. <clears throat> see you tomorrow to the... Ray. Yeah, I'm just yeah. ironing my shirt that I had on. Because I put my computer on my iron board, so I've moved my iron board over here, so I can <laughs> iron <laughs> Uh, so stay with you. And I say, you. Say, uh, you never walk alone. Well, uh, everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a nice sign. Where do you buy that? That's a nice one. The like. owl one. I like keeping owl things. It was me nuns. I think because <laughs> it looks so really old. Like I, I, me nan died a long time ago. Right, a long time ago. Well, if you bring it down, I'll buy that off you. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I've just got. I've got to. Uh, what do you? What do you do? Activate the card anyway. <laughs> and uh, gentlemen, suit time late. Oh yeah, look, he's got a clean shirt. On. Right, I've got to finish this. I really am. I'm cracking up. And. Just to say a big thank you to everybody who's uh, even Cody's mum who said, hang on a minute, thought this was a film show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me getting to that, doing my ironing and getting to that. Showing the whole Cody's, world. Cody's mum still peeping through, you know, so you better behave yourself. Lee. So anyway, uh, I'll see, see you all tomorrow. Up the Reds says Bunkers LFC. Yes, up the Reds. Don't forget to send us a link for tomorrow. No, not sending you one. I won't do uh, any iron, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> um, see you tomorrow for the after match, Frank. Have a good day. You never walk alone, says Paul Turn. Thank you, Paul. Everyone else in the chat. Respect. Yeah. And don't forget, Lee, you know, if you're bringing that iron down for me, unplug it. I don't want you to <laughs> burn. I don't want you to Kills burn. You. <laughs> All right, boys. See okay. you later, man. Okay, have a good day, fella, and I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Take care, and guys. You, Lee. Okay, see you later, boys. Thank you so much. Thank you all the chat. Love you all. Thank you.